What's up, everyone? <clears throat> Let's see. Get that mic position. There we go. Not happy with my chair position now. How's everybody doing? How's everybody's weekend? Karina, I'm sorry you're sick, babe. That sucks. Um, oh, new color. Um, yeah. Um, mad props on the the like pulling it through though. Sounds like you uh you did some shit. Yes, blue, blue. Um, good on you. Do everybody have a um, hey wither? Uh, do everybody have a, there was a revelation earlier wither about the uh the comment about the fucking strap ons aren't my thing but they're mine. Interesting wither. Um, what's up, Kansas people? Um. Thanks for the raid over, Kez. Uh, let's see. There we go. Get my mic position. Um, a wither, a wither. Rim world is a lot of things. Um, hey, Jen. Thanks for the follow. Um, we're literally just getting started. So, yes. Well, you didn't promise, but you did say you were planning on doing so. Um, 2 a.m. <laughs> um, not much, you French fuck. Um, Probably, probably should go with like American asshole or something so we can keep the alliteration going for twos, for sure. Um, yes, raid. Um, so, do everybody have a good weekend? Do everybody, uh, everybody get drunk, get stoned, have a good masturbatory session, get laid, run naked through the fields in a Dionysian ritual? Um, hey Chainsaw, hey Rev, um, plus two GMT crew, who here, not me, Bias, I'm minus eight, um, none of that, oof, that sounds like a rough weekend then, hey, fucking Zippy, you had to buy a new car on Tuesday, oof, like, new, new Carpe, or new to you, like, what, what, what tier expense, or, uh, um, was that for you? Because that's that's a motherfucker. Because you said doesn't exist until next year new. Oh well, enjoy it while it's new, Carpe. Enjoy it while it's new, man. That's a that's a bit of a that's a bit of a drop. Yeah. Um, you, you said you had to. Uh, your old one die on you. Wither. I have weed now. No lighter. Um. Oh, Joey, good work, man. Fucking good work. Absolute American asshole acting almost altogether acrimoniously. Beautiful alliteration there, Joey. Beautiful alliteration. Uh, alliteration. Um, let me scroll back a ways, though. Caboose, I learned of a really depressing situation about my aunt over the weekend, and my mom and dad went down to L.A. today to help them out. Otherwise, fine. Oh, Caboose, I, I I hope whatever it is is it, it proves temporary at most and it can be resolved um, rather quickly. Um, sorry, man, that sucks. <laughs> hey, cat boy. Um, okay, cat's going to phone. Yeah, and Karina, like that's where you got sick. You went to the uh, you went to the movie with your mom. And you fucking ended up sick as a result. Okay, so... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Karina. Um, it's a therapeutic upgrade in material... <laughs> carpe, carpe, carpe. You know we have a problem, right? You know we have a problem when, when you start thinking and talking like that. <laughs> It's a therapeutic upgrade to material conditions. <laughs> oh, I love you for that, man. Garbe, I love you just for that line alone. <laughs> and who says leftists are broken? Oh, Jesus Christ. The 17-year-old Prius was starting to bog down, and I do gig delivery work. Ah, all right. Yeah, that is important. What'd you, what'd you get, Carpe? What'd you, what'd you upgrade to? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 
It's fixable, luckily. That's the silver. Rock on, Caboose. Glad, glad to hear it's at least fixable. Um. Okay, Karina, it's just body load, no cough. Good. Um. <laughs> Withers, I'll learn how to make a fire by now. You, you probably should have, Carpe. Uh, Corolla Hybrid, interesting. All right. Um. Yeah, I went Toyota with the newest one as well. I have a 2019 Highlander. Um, and I went Toyota. Um, I had a Saturn for years and years and years and years and years and years. Um, that thing fucking lasted. I beat the shit out of that car and it lasted. That thing, it fucking, it, it was amazing how, re how reliable and how durable that car was. Um, my mom had a Chevy as her last car. Um, and do that, the Chevy Malibu. That thing was in the shop. I'm not kidding you. Every month, every other month. It was fucking just a piece of shit. I'm like, well, I am I want something at least in the, the realm of as reliable as my old car, seeing as it lasted me for a long time. Um, so I went Toyota. Uh, Tim Pool is some right-wing chud, some commentator, some talking mouth. He's got a podcast and a, a, like a YouTube stream or something like that. Me, Chud. Um... Did you hear a new, oh fucking, oh god, a new anarchy dropped, anarcho tyrannist by Tim Pool. Well, that's it folks, call it, we're done, we're, we're just done, phone it in, just, just, yeah, I don't know, what your choice is, whether it's, you know, heroin overdose or a bullet to the fucking dome, you might as well just call it right now, yeah, fucking anarcho -tyr tyrannist by Tim Pool, well, you know. <sighs> I, I just <laughs> Tim Pool is sponsored by Erotic Dirt. <laughs> oh, all Erotic Dirt, still still paying dividends. For those of you who don't know what Erotic Dirt is, there's Erotic Dirt. Um. Uh, yeah, he's in charge of marketing and advertising. Let's get him on the phone. For sure. Um, Tim Pool and his best friend broke up. Aww. Well, I mean, you know, I don't really give a shit about Tim Pool, but I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, Carpe. Like, it's, it's, it's a fucking thing. Um, I mean, it sucks. Like, I feel bad for the, the guy if, he, if his relationship with his best friend really did end. Like, that's... The, it's a bummer. I don't give a shit that the we he's a right wing chud or any of that sort of shit. Like you know, he's still a human being. I think I suspect. Um, he at least has all the trappings of one. So, I, fuck if I know Rev. Um, I, caboose. I, I please don't think about it too hard. You might hurt something. Uh, I don't. Don't. Just don't gonna end up with a fucking aneurysm or some shit um oh karina um someone else's feelings didn't care about his feelings uh karina um i mean i can go into far okay so i use my stream um is not only a political platform but also an outlet for my personal life and that sort of thing right i've i mean my very first stream was to quell my own anxiety over never having never done a podcast or a stream before be and i needed to get to i needed to scream into the void and the, you know that sort of thing right so my personal life has always been an element of my streams of my podcasts of my writing uh, of my community development um i think it's best to share of yourself um that sort of thing um and in those um oh please karina I'm, I'm i have to i have to moderate what i'm going to say here karina for sure um i will give i will give you the um the uncensored version at a later date um uh, because i know you want the dirty details so i will i will provide them um but in an effort to keep the community up to date, 
um, in, into as to Kai's life and that sort of thing. Um, me and my um, <laughs> Kez, uh, Kez, you already, you already, I don't need to go through them with you, Kez. You could probably fill in the details yourself. Um, me and my longtime partner, companion, that sort of thing, have sort of parted ways. Um, for me, this is not a big deal. Do not have any sort of outpouring or, you know, oh, I, for me, there is no emotional load to this. It really isn't a thing for me. Um, just part of being a romantic, right? Like it's, it's the, the, the portion of our relationship that occupied my brain, um, started having other needs, um, that could not be fulfilled within the confines of what he found acceptable or willing to do or comfortable to do and these sorts of things. So, um, we sort of, you know, fuck it. I'm not happy with my hair today. We're going to fucking, we're going to do, we're going to do a hat stream. Y'all we're doing more and more hat streams recently because quite frankly, it's a lot easier than fucking trying to fuck with my hair. Um, well, I mean, we were, we were compatible for a time and then we weren't and that I'm okay with that. Like, that's the thing is I, I, if I were, if I were 18 or 24 or something like that again, crack, um, I might, I might be having a teary over it. Um, but truth of the matter is, is that I have some sexual desires that could not be fulfilled by him, and as such, it's best we part our ways. Um, Zippy, I require a certain level of intensity. Um, I don't know how, how fine a point I should put on this um, to t tap dance TOS successfully. Um, Marcus, yeah, Marcus is on, Marcus is on the right path at least. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> do those desires require plastic cheating in a non-disclosure agreement? Um, Mitre, I mean, he could fuck me pretty hard. Um, but there's other elements that contribute, um, that, you know, I... <clears throat> I'm not getting any younger. I've got enough testosterone in me to fucking knock a bowl over to the ground. I don't know. I don't have an analogy for the amount of testosterone I have circulating in my blood. I, I did my uh, tests. I have, yeah, trust me, there's a, there's a fair amount. I got my lab results back today. There's a fair amount. Um, for Tuse, um, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> no, no, Kez, never, never. They don't have, they don't have what it takes in the other department. Um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not the, the, um, staying power. It's not the hip thrusting that comes into play. It's this portion of it. I mean, granted, there's extensions of that, but it's 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 this portion that he he was not capable of, comfortable, uh, capable of or comfortable doing, um, and it, that sort of started creating a division, and that division had been growing for some time, and you know it came to a head. It is what it is. No big deal. Um. Me, Trey, that's the tip of the iceberg, my man. That's the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> that's, that's, um, I, I, me, I, if, dude, if you want to know the down and dirty details, I'll fucking share them with you behind the scenes sometime. No worries. I, I, I got no, I, if it weren't for TOS, I'd just tell you guys, like, I would just do it on stream. I'd be like, here's what I'm into. Here's what he wasn't comfortable doing. Here's, you know, that sort of, this sort of thing. Right. Um, <clears throat> um, hey Cassidy. And so, um, last night, um, <laughs> just a little catch up. Um, uh, so Karina, to answer your question, 
Um, last night was a bit of a, let's call it an interview. For lack of a better term. Right? Both parties feeling each other out. Seeing if there's, um... Oh, Zippy, there's, even with an 18 over stream, like, I, I really couldn't, I couldn't share the down and dirties on that one. Um, yes, Angie. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, last night was a bit of an interview process. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to call it a date. Let's just put it that way, given, given the nature of it, given the structure of it. It's, it's, it's not really a date, per se. Um, Karina, to answer your question, um, something implies one, singular. Um, there were multiple things. Uh, not, not simultaneously, but over the course of, yes. Um, <laughs> me try. Oh, me try. Um... But yes, so last night was, um, I, I spent a good portion of last night, um, this, I, I'm pretty sure this, this I can, I can just, like, I spent a good portion of last night, um, not being able to see, um, and not being able to move, or at least minor movements at most. Let's just say those the the limitations of the movement were greatly restricted. Um, so yes, um, yeah. Um, Karina, por qué no los dos? Um, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> Well, actually, Marcus, it's um, it's more of a, a sort of like broad categories, granular categories. First meeting broad categories, uh, subsequent potential meetings, some more granular workings out. So if you pass checkpoint one, it's like, okay, are we good with this, 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 and this? All right, so the important bases are covered. Now branching out from the first this there's three subsections of that are we good with that sort of thing and you have to feel that out a little further um hey david um what's up man um so yeah yeah last night was um yeah thomas safe words would be uh, a good idea wouldn't they Sorry, what? <laughs> um. <clears throat> so there is your um stream appropriate update as to Kai's sex life. Um. So yeah. Uh, we uh. Does mean we have to schlep a little bit further um, than before. Um, also, you know, this is only one, but, you know, I've, I've got a few that I'm in talks with. Um, you know, I, 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 how do I, how do I say this without saying, like, sounding like an asshole? Um... I'm wantable. <laughs> so I, I I put up the for sale sign and fuckers wanna buy. Um so that is that. So that's that's sort of that update. Um let's see. Why are people asking about vanilla shit like it's hardcore? <laughs> Wait, is that what normal people are like? Yes, yeah. Um, Kez, um, for sure. Yeah, Kez, the, most people aren't, you know, used to that. I, 
I. Oh, don't you start now, Wither. Um. Yeah, I. I um. <laughs> thank you, Zippy. Um. We'll see. Um. I'm a little. I'm a little sore today. <laughs> Not hugely. Not the most I've ever been. But I'm a little, little, little battered and a little, a little battered today. Um, no, no, Thomas, never, always sub, always sub. Angie, I, I, um. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Three hours in total, but trying to, let's see. I'm just trying to figure out how long we were in the playroom. Yes, he has a playroom. Um. Time gets a little subjective. Time gets a little subjective. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, he toys. Yeah, he's got um, he's got the pegboard. He's got like a wall with the pegboard. He's actually got a a, a, a fucking workbench with like drawers. Like pull out drawers, and then on the 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 other wall, it's a it's a pegboard, with like things put up. Yeah. Um. And of course the um. Swede knows the term. Dude, okay. The fact that Swede knows the term subspace, I'm a little bothered by that. Swede, you're like I look at you kind of like a fatherly figure, Swede. You're not you're not supposed to know the term subspace. Like I, I need I need you to just be bland and like boring like missionary style sex and shit, sweet. I don't know why, but I, I just need you to fill that role for me. Uh, <laughs> the fact that you know the term subspace, sweet. Well it's like your dad walking into the room and talking about subspace. It's just like, man, I don't know if I can do this. <clears throat> Fair enough, sweet. Fair enough. Um, there goes Swede crashing down from that pedestal I put him up on. Shouldn't do, shouldn't have done in the first place. That's on me. Um, such a dude playroom, workbenches and pegboard. Fuck yeah, Cassie, utilitarian. Um, kill your heroes. Fair enough. Very utilitarian. Um, my throat is a little rough. I told him to take it easy on it, but still, I mean, it was you know. Good portion of that was me as well. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> you know, got a little uh, overzealous, shall we say? Um, Caboose, I will provide you that education uh, off the air. Um, I, I will happily share that information with you, Caboose. Um, and yes, very much a a, a, a gay dude's uh, playroom for sure. Um, black. Um, black matting on the on the ground, like uh, black foam matting with with cover on it to protect, you know, carpet floor that sort of thing. Um, you know, hooks to suspend things from slings, but, well, sling hooks, framework. Um, hey, Frackle. All right, Swede. You can't be knowing Mr. S. All right? You cannot be knowing Mr. S. I need you, sweet, <laughs> fucking A, Swede. Fucking A, Swede. The fact that you know. <laughs> sweet, that's what Mr. S is. Oh, my God. Yeah, you aren't vanilla, right? Are you, uh, are you Swede? Damn. Uh, for two it is. Um, especially, uh, Zach. All right. 
Yeah, I can't. Just put your home movie up for movie night already, Kai. We're all waiting patiently. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Mitre. It's to, Mitre, it is it is fascinating that you are you are the most oversexed man I have met in a very long time, but you are actually kind of you're plain and vanilla, which is is kind of hilarious. Um 1000 sub bonus. Oh my god. No. Like I don't even uh, just yeah. Um all right, um, and who, um, and Carpe asked anything pneumatic. Um, yes. Yes. Um, he is missing a piece that I, I would love to see in the collection. Um, there is one, one piece of kit that I've always kind of wanted to try that isn't in his collection that I'm going to, you know, if we do end up adopting a longer term role set with each other. I'm going to sort of, you know, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Um, a little influence. <laughs> oh God, I mean, am I in a bondage? It's going to be so expensive. It is. It is really expensive, especially Mr. S gear. Fucking only the only bougie fucks like me and Swede can afford Mr. S gear. Like, you gotta be some Silicon Valley tech, uh, gay tech executive to be buying Mr. S gear. That shit is, that shit comes at a premium. I'm still, I'm still tripping on that. The fact that Swede of all people dropped Mr. S in chat. Fuck me. Caboose. Well, Mr. S was a regrettable Google search. <laughs> I mean, I like Mr. S's cages. Dude, but the fact that Swede, of all people, is the one that fucking drops Mr. S in chat. Of all you fucking homo degens and shit in my community, it's the fucking straight finance dude with two kids and shit that, will, that drops the Mr. S reference. Uh, does that count as deploying Swede? <laughs> Uh, econ is so boring, so I gotta get my weird on somehow. You know what? I respect it, Swede. That makes sense. Makes sense. Um. Oh, Mitra, you gotta, dude, you just, before you get too old, Mitra, you gotta live some of it out. You gotta do it. I'm telling you, it's so much fun. Um. <laughs> uh, in this case, please do not deploy Swede. <laughs> Uh, Carpe, I'm a total homo DJ noob, but well, Carpe, there's always time to learn. Get to make them kids somehow. That's easy, Cassidy. Like, you can do that and not even be a DJ about it. You can do that through a sheet, even. <laughs> I'm a bad dragon sim, so I hadn't known them till today. Oh, Karina, they, they have some high-end kit. Premium leather gear and shit like that. Yeah, stuff that can cost some money for sure like um pair of uh, wrist cuffs like locking wrist cuffs and ankle cuffs um 200 bucks like there's just that's just baseline 200 bucks like you could probably pick the, the the wrists up for maybe 60 and then probably like buck 20 for the ankle ones because there's a fucking difference apparently i don't know but yeah mr s is fucking expensive <clears throat> uh wither um M M mr s is in san francisco um it it's not exactly a franchise <laughs> let's just put it that way it's they're in san francisco um wither get into leather working to save on bondage dude wither if you think leather gear is expensive, leather bondage gear carries a premium. Like that's a that's a craft. Like that's a craft and it would make you a lot of money. A lot of money. Um Oh, sweet sweet sweet. Who knew? Who knew Swede is fucking cat who knew 
was Swede was fucking hanging in the the ranks of the Dgens, like proper, like proper. Respect, Swede. I'm looking at you in a whole new light now, Swede. Like whole new light. Like you're you're one of our people. Holy shit, Swede. Um. <laughs> I got the tools. Just send me a pic of what you want. Everything. <laughs> uh. Oh god, I hate that. I I'm I have never. I, I've I've never done the daddy thing. I I don't call dudes daddy. It just. Oh god, that creeps me out. And Swede's got good taste. Not only is Swede a fucking DJ and a half, Swede's got good taste in his kit. Oh, God. Welcome to the ranks, man. Welcome to the ranks. Uh, Daddy is creepy word to hear in a sexual context. No, thank you. No, thank you. I, I just, it's fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, what we're learning is... What we're, what we're learning is about Swede's wife. Actually, we don't know who the sub in that relationship is, or if it's a switch situation. Oh. Mm, now it begs the question. How does Swede get his freak on? Um, <laughs> Mitre, go handle your business. Uh, I respect it. Well, yeah, Carpe, of course it is. I mean, it's, it's literally... No, no, Caboose. Most, I think, I think, I think a significant portion of the populace finds the daddy thing creepy as shit. It, it, see, Zippy, I'm of the opinion that Swede's like in that high power position. We're going to speculate on, on your, your sexuality, Swede, just with you in the room. Um, so you should be sitting there. We're going to be talking about you. Um, I think Swede is in that like classic Fortune 500 CEO territory, like you know he's he's in a fairly powerful fi like financier position. I I think he needs the release. See, I think Swede like doesn't want to make the decisions and that sort of thing. Like he has to make those judgment calls all the time, day to day work. Like he just wants to switch his brain off, and because that's the sort of situation I find myself in. I I think Swede's on the other side of that. It's just my take. I, swear, I reckon you've got sweet pegged. <laughs> you know what? Um. <clears throat> oh, it's kicking off again. The wind was brutal last night. While I was um, blindfolded and being pounded, I couldn't really fucking hear it. But the um, the wind and like it's just absolute fuck all storm here last night. Um, and it's kicking off again. Oh, I don't know, Karina. That's 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 a fair speculation. Or is he frustrated from like people not listening, bosses not listening? Like, if I were in charge of this sort of thing, and he he's he's looking for that surety, he's looking for that you know re uh, reaffirmation of his of his his willpower, as it were. Could be the flip side of that. That's a good insight, Karina. Ah, uh, sorry to do that to you, sweet. Um. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Steve. Fucking a few of us apologizing. Sorry, Swede. Um, but you brought it upon yourself, Swede. You brought it upon yourself. Um. Yes, yes. Withered. That that counts. 
<clears throat> for sure. Yeah, I think. Hold on. Give me one sec. It is torrential downpour. It is, it is an absolute torrential downpour right now. Um, Carpe, I'm in, uh, I'm in Vegas. How do you not know that already? <laughs> Either way, I'm in Vegas. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, tell you what, hang on. I'll kill the music and leave the leave the rain. Uh, so we're saying it's monsoon season. We due to climate change, fucking monsoon season didn't happen last year. We we just got we just didn't get it. This year This year we're getting it. Um Yeah, sweet. Yeah, that's that. That's why I was of that position. That Fortune 500 bankers, CEOs, um, technology consultants, people people who make sort of authoritative decisions on a regular basis tend to be the ones that put on the chastity device and get pegged, as you so eloquently put. Hey, Krusty. Yeah, no worries, Carpe. Can you send some of that to California? If I could, I would, Caboose. <laughs> I run outside for a second and then switch to the hot dope category. Should I should I go put on my um my w sheer white um like thong underwear and just fucking drop the skirt, go run around in the rain and then come back in with a white sh white t-shirt and a white thong? And we'll just we'll switch it to the hot tub category and fucking spin up the OnlyFans. We'll just do this shit. Um. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I know. There we go. Oh, <laughs> well, when you want to make the real money, yes. Yes, nonsense. It is rain. It is pouring down. It is, it is a torrential downpour. Yeah. <laughs> we went right into the horny talk. Let's end on a bang. It's, you know, it's because fucking Karina asked. Um, oh, what do we got? We got me train music. For the oh, fucking out. Sweet. 
Sweet even knows the fucking good kink stores on other continents. Sweet. You and I need to have a chat, man. So what's what's the audio clip from me, Trey? <laughs> Whether do we have any chuds in chat who may be thirsty? Um, or did 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 me Trey already fuck off to go uh, <clears throat> handle business? Yeah, okay, yeah, Rev, I think he's still busy. Yeah, I was like, or, or are we, or is Mitre, uh, <clears throat> occupied? Does he have his hands full? Um, I actually saw a Nevada monsoon in the early 90s. The desert appeared to flood and then seemed to start drinking the, uh, drink the standing water into the sand within moments of the rain stopping. Yeah, carpe, it's like that. It, it slides over the surface of the water. Uh, yeah, nonsense, this is Mitre. It slides over the sur uh, surface of uh, of the um, uh, slides over the surface of the uh, the dirt of the desert initially, due to the dehydrated nature of the uh, land out here. It actually doesn't absorb initially, but once it's standing, once it gets an opportunity to sit uh, sit there, then it starts absorbing it rapidly, and so it's perfect flash flood situation. It can just slide for miles, but once it reaches a gully, it just. <laughs> Oh, sweet. I mean, come on. If we're talking sexual depravity, the jerk... Come on. I mean, that's like that's like comparing militaries and saying, like, well, you know, but the U.S. Of course the U.S., but, that you know, discount that. Like, it's by miles and miles and miles our military is the most powerful, right? The Germans are by far the most depraved sexually, and we all know that. So we just, you know, everybody gets an asterisk, except German, you know. And it's already starting to slow. Here. It's still going, but it's starting to slow already. This is how desert rains work. They just dump everything within moments. 15 minutes, and you're done. Hey, Gemma. Oh, okay. She's crazy. I was trying to find something in chat that wasn't there. Um, the Germans sword fight face to face. They're hardcore. <laughs> Carpet. It's been a while since I've had a good sword fight. Um. Yeah, Zippy, basically. Interesting. It's good to know, Gemma, but yeah, they, they don't usually come across my radar. Of course, some of the, the crews I run, the scenes that I run in, you know. It takes a bit to... <clears throat> to gain notoriety, shall we say. Oh, yeah, Karina, don't play Cyberpunk yet. Don't. Do yourself that favor. I, I put 34 hours into it, I think. And I didn't finish anything. Like, But, yeah, just, just wait. Oh, well, that, I mean... That just comes with the territory, right, Gemma? Like, come on. I mean, what are you gonna do? Occasionally, you gotta fuck a severed pig face, uh, severed pig's head to get into a, a fucking frat boy club. Yeah. Honestly, it's fun to pick on him for it, but roles reversed. Yeah, I'd have fucking stuck my dick in that pig face. Are you kidding me? It's like, you know, 
it's the fucking Oxford Dining Club. Like, these are future leaders of the world, basically. Like, put your dick in the pig face, man. <laughs> Who gives a shit? You, you want to run a country? Put your fucking dick in the pig face. <laughs> that's, that's sort of how that rolls. Um... Okay, the humidity is already killing me. I gotta close that fucking door. I'll be back. I... <laughs> oh, Rev. Uh, there was a Hamburg poster officially released encouraging uh, people to wear masks of a woman sitting on someone's face and it said, make sure he covers the mouth and nose. Oh, hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Kez, can you find me that poster? Can you find me a picture of that poster, Kez? I love that Mitre turns people he wants to take a piss a piss out of, take the piss out of, um, into songs. Like if you threaten Mitre or like do some stupid shit on the air, you're gonna be in a song. I I, I actually enjoy that. Uh, enjoy that. Okay, Gemma, take care of yourself. Thanks for stopping by. Um. Yeah, that's that's what happens. It fucking we've got we've got a couple. Um fucking uh dumbass has infrared. Fucking Mitre turned him into a song for us. Yeah. Cope, 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 cope. cope. Yeah. That's that's just what Mitre does. There it is. That's amazing, Kez. Hold on. <laughs> it's in shared content if you want to see it. Oh, Bobby, it's already almost stopping. Ha, <laughs> Krusty! Can a brother just wear a hat? The fuck is this shit about? <laughs> is this an ad to wash your ass or your face? Um, <laughs> it's kind of hot. Um, yeah, that's a hell of an ad. That is that is quite the ad. I will I will say that. And is it? Yeah, I just want to check something. I was just say it's not. I'm like, and you didn't even spell it correctly. 
<laughs> I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> um, Interesting. Um, <laughs> and then multiple people. <clears throat> Bunch of D Gen fucks. I love you. Um, hey, idiot. catch up on chat there um so headlines i suppose with some news stories um oh, i'm just gonna I'm just gonna stretch got my uh legs up oh, jesus now it's all humidity up in here um uh, so the Frito Lay workers that were on strike have ended their 20 day strike. Um, the contract change that they agreed to, they get they now get one guaranteed day off per week. Yeah. Yeah, they get a day off. That's yes, rep one, one. Yeah, no zippy. This is I'm not I'm not fucking with y'all. They ended a twenty day strike, and the contract change that they got was they now get a day off. Yeah. <sighs> Just, you know. So, oh, you're just about to, oh man, you, uh, you asked a question. Matt, just hang on to the question for a second. So apropos of the Frito-Lay workers striking for 20 days and getting a day off, right? Okay, so prior to this, that this, this implies is they didn't get a day off beforehand. So... In, in honor of that, um, apropos of that story, we're just gonna we're just gonna shift gears here. okay So I just told you about the Frito lay workers who went on strike for 20 days and the, the results of their strike is that they, they now get a day a a day off. So of that, just you know <clears throat> So in 1939 the the Finnish uh, populace, um, were fighting against totalitarianism when the Soviets bombed their country is a prelude to the gigantic strategic mess that would be the uh, end up being the Winter War. But that war began with the bombardment of Helsinki, which um, the former Soviet minister um, uh, Veshkalov Molotov uh, claimed was a humanitarian aid drop. The Finns, of course, retaining their infamous sense of dark humor called those bombs Molotov's bread baskets. 
After that, everything bad became associated with Molotov. Blackout curtains used to stop bombers uh, spotting uh, within urban areas were called Molotov curtains. Bombing planes were called Molotov's chickens. Within a month of the Soviet invasion, um, there was an article written uh, in the New York Times uh, said that the, the Finns have a rough homemade weapon that they find very effective. Simply a mineral water bottle half filled with gasoline with a stick attached to it like a fuse. By the 1940s, the Finnish military was literally calling these things uh, Molotov cocktails. Just a little piece of history for you. In no way, shape, or form am I suggesting anything. I'm just merely sharing some history that is apropos um, and relevant to the topics we cover on this channel. So, anyway. <clears throat> I know some of y'all real I know some of y'all like that. <laughs> Um, okay, so let me pop it, Matt. Um, uh, what's the difference between an anarchist and hardcore libertarian, not philosophically? I mean, well, I mean, that's kind of the big difference. What differs the personality of someone who's an anarchist and hardcore libertarian? Um, self centeredness, circles of empathy, empathet uh, empathetic and sympathetic response. Um, to another human being suffering, I would say is probably your largest differentiator there. Um, the libertarian sees that as your problem. And if I choose to help you with it, then you should be grateful. And it is solely done for my own purposes. An anarchist would say that this is a counterproductive modality of operating your, um, your, so your society. And that if uh, by lifting you up, I lift us all up by creating a, a set of circumstances in which you can thrive. I create a set of circumstances in which we can can thrive. So an anarchist would look at it as, with one major exemption, um, hardcore individualists um, of the sternerist, egoist variety do not fall under this umbrella. They are sort of a different conversation, shall we say. But they do not make up the primary um, the primary grouping. Uh, they, they do not make up a, a majority even close. They're Anarcho individualists, anarcho like egoists and sternerists account for like a single digit percentage of the anarchist milieu. Um, <clears throat> so the majority of the anarchists would would say that they are more um, mutual aid based, socially based, uh, communitarian in nature. And therefore, the difference is, is that the libertarian would be focused on them and any extension of community activism or mutual aid that they engage in is an individualistic response, whereas the majority of the anarchists would say that that is a function helping you is a function of creating a better working society. <laughs> this guy had a bag of Doritos right now and just casually ate one. Um, Austerity is societal weakness. It is. Um, sourcing, it depends on the egoist, but they, they refer to a union of egoists is the, the sternerist uh, term for that. That, that it is no man is an island and we unfortunately and for him it is very much unfortunately sort of thing they couch it as yeah, if I could I you know but yeah hey grumpy uh, zippy yes but for different reasons cat would argue that um 
there is no such thing as actual altruism that all you are pursuing is a biochemical reaction within your brain that helps that makes you feel good and also underpins or helps support a um, improved society for yourself that you're doing it out of egoistic or self-centered purposes at the end of the day whether you wish to admit that to yourself or not that would be cat that would be cat's argument um and I, I, I'm comfortable literally telling you Kat's argument. He, he, Kat and I, <clears throat> we've done this enough times. We know each other's arguments. Like we can just occupy each other's like political mind like that and be like, yeah, this, this is what he can, Kat can do. This is what Kai would say. And I can do, this is what Kat would say. Um, so yeah, Kat would tell you that there is no such thing as altruism and that what you're actually pursuing is a feel good reaction of your, for yourself. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Can I bump this up and see where it lands? Um, all right. No, no, Matt. It's it's not sacrificing yourself for others. It's it is it's more pragmatic than that for for anarchists. Um, anarchists are really you're you're adding a moralistic element that anarchists would not add. Um, you're you're seeing that as sort of this this moralistic uh, quandary. Um, anarchists would probably buy. They would. There's two arguments that the anarchists are more than likely going to say it's going to be an ethical or a meta ethical argument or it's going to be a very pragmatic that system is broken and we can build a better functioning one argument oh god no sweet but if you can get me the if you can get me the video of it i'm more than happy to give it a listen and watch um Carpe, and that's, yeah, utilitarian calculus dictates that you don't give a shit. That, that's the thing, is I don't care. At the end of the day, utilitarian calculus dictates that I don't care whether Cat is doing it out of some, like, twisted, like, you know, like, util, uh, um, egoist ver iteration of helping people. I don't care. Are you willing to help people? Are you willing to engage in the mutual aid? Yes. Conversation over. Don't care. We're good. Um, so, you know, I feel you on that one. Um, all right. Just listen. I've told some of these boys here, I said, if you got a wife and you on the volunteer fire department, EMT and all that stuff, all that's about is adrenaline rush. And it ain't nothing but a glorified soap opera. And you don't hang around at the firehouse and with a wife at home without ending up in trouble. And that's the truth. Some vocations are not, even though they're needed vocations and they have to be done, they're not fitting for Christians. It's nothing but a soap opera. Well, preacher, somebody's got to do this job. Let somebody do it. You get another one. So well, that sounds, you know, crude or cruel. I'm just telling you, there's some things that is sensual. That preacher had his heart broken by a firefighter. That preacher had his pee pee feel, fe made to feel funny by a firefighter. Nonsense. He was arguing against firefighters. He literally, he, what he is doing in that clip, he is arguing that Christians, good Christians, 
are not firefighters. Firefighters are adrenaline chasers. Firefighters are sensual. And that is a soap opera. And that is not no place for a good Christian. The fact that he sees firefighting, volunteer firefighters, he literally calls out volunteer firefighters as being sensual. His word, his word, his word, sensual. Come on, man. <laughs> There's no fucking way around that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I would be surprised if God burnt the church to the ground. Um, wow, go figure. The first person to say fuck the fire department is a white Christian male. Um, yeah, me thinks he got chubbed by a hot firefighter candle. For sure. For sure. He, 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 he's, he had a daughter or a wife or something that cheated on him with a firefighter or option B. His PP felt weird when he looked at a firefighter one time. <laughs> And ever since then, well, you know, cucumbers are a sensuous vegetable, would you say? Um, the firefighters, yeah, dude, firefighters are sexy as fuck. It's not just the fact that they're, they're like in shape by and large. It, it's the fact of what they do. They selflessly run into a burning building to save like the elderly and children and pets and shit. Like they, they throw caution to the wind. They throw their own safety and security and well-being to the fucking just into the void in an effort to rescue you, a person they've never met, and they carry you out in their arms. Are you kidding me? Firefighters are the hottest goddamn people on the planet. They are sexy beyond belief. That pastor, methinks he doth protest too much. Let's just put it that way. Um... Bobby, I don't know. Uh, he's Kentucky. I don't know who he is. Um, sorry. Let me try and find the comments on this. Um, I've told some. Shut up, cr crazy fucker. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. But he's, he's Kentucky. That's all I can tell you. Um, yeah, oh yeah, I got, I got the Rick Wiles link. I, I, I copied it. Um, uh, Uh, wait. How did so many people in the church agree to his words? Who the fuck knows? Because, because they're brainwashed fucking idiots. That's, I mean, let's be frank about it. Let's just, just call it the way we see it. Uh. No, Matt. This is this is us trying to convey a complex series of philosophical points to you, and you didn't want to talk about philosophy. The difference is is that we believe in social programs. The difference is that we believe in the social group. The difference is is that we actually believe in the communitarian aspect of society. And libertarians, on the other hand, believe in laissez-faire capitalism. They believe in individualism. They do not believe in sharing of resources in that manner. They do not believe in the public usage of resources. They do not believe... There's, there's a multitude of things that fall under philosophical avenues of, uh, of difference, but you literally excluded them with your initial converse, uh, uh, concept. So we try to bring it down to the personal level of, as you requested. But the difference is vast. It's a fucking chasm. Now, if you're going to say they're, they're libertarian in nature, yeah, anarchists are libertarian in nature as the classical definition of libertarianism, as in libertas, right? Like derived from the French, classical libertarianism, European libertarianism. If I were speaking to a French person, I could say libertarian and they would know what I mean. If I say this to an American, they don't know what I mean. 
And so this is, this, there's a giant chasm of difference between a libertarian and an anarchist, but many of them are economic and philosophical, economic are philosophical differences, sorry, Swede, but economic are philosophical differences at the end of the day. <clears throat> It is, it is literally about a difference in ordering structure of your society. It's, it's the difference between lining things up and stacking them on top of each other. It's like, yeah, these are really different orders of, you know, uh, orders of uh, uh, or, uh, modalities of operation. Oh, God. All right, here we go. Let's stop being nice about these people. I, I, look, I'm guilty of being too diplomatic and too nice. These are not good people. They're not good people. They're evil and they they're want evil us dead. They're evil and they're wicked. And they want us dead. And they want us dead. Anya, holy shit. Holy shit, Anya. Uh, well, I hope, I hope it turns out, I hope you're just sick, Anya. I hope you're just sick. Let's get it out on the table. They, call, they called us assassins. Yes. Yes. Let's get it out on the table. They're wicked. They're evil. They're not good. And they want us dead. Is that clear enough? It's clear as day. I say let's meet at Gettysburg. Get this over with. Hey, listen, this is the times we're in. I mean, this is the reality. Um, these people are ruling and reigning over us. A bunch of sissified lefties would never come out and meet real men. <laughs> Glazy, you're an idiot if you think that's true. Hey, everybody. It's a bunch of sissified uh, lefties who, again, would never take up arms or fucking, you know, come out to meet you on the battlefield whatsoever. That's definitely not a thing that's ever happened with lefties before. That's for sure something that we don't have a history of doing, right? Like, there's, there's absolutely... No instances that we could pull up from even the 1900s showing leftists engaging in battle, right? Like, for sure, that's just definitely not a thing. <laughs> you know Rick Wiles also knows <laughs> Mr. S. Oh, Jesus, I don't want that image in my head. Um, Anya, yes. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. Again, lefties definitely never come out in force. They have never once, even recently, engaged with the powers that be, even though they may be met with overwhelming force by the state, Sissified leftists definitely never fight. For sure, that's a thing. You would have to be epically stupid. So, hey, Glazy, you still here? That was my point, Adia. 
So what about all of this, like, billions of dollars that the fucking left caused, like, damage that the left caused in the U.S., right? Like, what about all the police officers that we've uh, supposedly harmed over the, over the fucking riots? Like, all the people harmed, all the police officers assaulted and harmed, like, all, that just all went out the window that didn't happen? So which is it? Which is it? You can't have it both ways, man. Either we are a danger to society or we aren't. And what you're doing there, by the way, Glazy, is one of the iterations that, um, that Umberto Eco calls out as fascist. That is one of the things that fascists do. The enemy is both strong and weak. Antifa is to be feared, but they are a bunch of soy boy, sissified lefties. You can't have it both ways, man. Are we dangerous or are we sissies? Never. They're cowards. They're a bunch of cowards. They never would come out in face. They never would come out and face real men. Yeah, real patriots that love this country. That's right. They'll never do it. Nope. They're nothing but stinking cowards. I'm fed up with putting up with their crap. I'm a free man. <laughs> I live in a free country. No, you don't. And men You're died full of shit. for this country. And on my watch. Were they you, Rick? Watch in my generation. We're watching it being taken from us and we're too lazy to stop it. We got to be ashamed of ourselves. Well, Rick, here's your fucking rifle, man. Like, here's, here's your fucking AR-15. What are you going to do about it, man? You going to sit on the fucking TV channel fucking bitching about it? Or are you going you gonna to actually do something, Rick? You're not a coward too, Rick, are you? Right? Right? Right, Rick? Right? Fucking pussy ass over the hill piece of crap. We ought to be ashamed that we're allowing these cowards to take our country. <laughs> we don't want to be inconvenienced with putting down a communist revolution. <laughs> yeah, it's, here. Yeah, it's here. And if the people don't do something very, very soon, you're going to end up in a concentration camp. And after that, you're going to end up in a grave. <laughs> oh, oh, Ricky, Ricky Pooh. Oh. Swede, thanks for sharing that link, man. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he wouldn't survive. Are you shitting me? He's a power bottom. Um, he, he, he needs more creative fear mongering. Fair enough. Um, He was talking about oh, Jesus Christ, Glazy. We got to school you twice because you had to fucking do something. Somebody want to fucking Cliff Notes, Glazy? Basically, you walked in the room and said, "True, this guy is spitting." At the same time that this it, it, that Rick Wiles, a fucking psychopath, by the way, was saying that the uh, the left is a bunch of sissies and that we need to take this to Gettysburg, and they would never because they're cowards. Meanwhile, what I put on screen after that was picture after picture after picture of militant inter insurrectionary and violent actions taken by leftists. On a global scale, up to and including something recently with fucking uh, uh, with cops engulfed in fire. Um, and so what you were attempting to do, Glazy, is literally one of Umberto Eco's checkpoints on fascist thought patterns. It is your enemy is both weak and strong. So which is it? Did Antifa cause billions of dollars of damage and assaulted untold amounts of police officers and are violent, dangerous actors within the streets of America, or are we a bunch of soy boy sissy cucks? You can't have it both ways, man. Take your fucking pick. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, Swede. If you were to hear about a gun range that was named 88 Tactical, what would you think your assumption of political leanings of the owners would be? Not great. Not great. Yeah, I'd be worried. I'd be worried, Swede. Oh, look, they are, too. They literally are. Signal 88, a private security company, and 88 Tactical, a gun range and tactical training organization. Founded by a former deputy sheriff. They insist that it's eight, number 88 is Omaha police radio code for all clear or situation secure. Oh, just wait. Oh, just wait. They have this map in their store. They have this map in their store. In their fucking store on a wall. They have this map. It's an elevation map. It's a mural showing how high up someone could be in sea feet elevation. These motherfuckers can't keep their masks on anymore. They can't keep their fucking masks on. I don't know. I don't understand what happened. Like there was that change in white supremacists in the early 90s where they decided to like collectively ditch the shaved heads and the fucking jack boots and put on a three piece suit and tie and like infiltrate business and corporate America. Right. What happened? They had, they had solid OPSEC run in there for like a decade and a half. <clears throat> a USGS topographical map of the Omaha area shows that that's not the correct elevation for that location either. Their campus is located at 1181 feet, and you don't see elevations approaching 1500 feet until you go much further west of them. Oh, dear, sweet Jesus. Want to see some of the coffee they sell? I, I do know that, Carpe. Yeah. <laughs> they've got a helicopter one, and they've got an SS one. Holy shit. <sighs> oh, 
Oh, and of course, of course, their logo. Uh, Zippy, it's uh, a reference to, um, oh god, forgive me. Who the fuck used to toss people out of the helicopter? Who's, uh, it's escaping me. Um, it's one of the South American, Pinochet, thank you, Pinochet, thank you. The, the flood of Pinochet. I'm like, it's fucking, it's one of the South American ones, like, Pinochet. Um, used to to it tosses enemies out of, uh, political enemies or opponents out of helicopters. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. Nah. I'm sure they're all meaningless coincidences. <clears throat> meaningless coincidences. <laughs> uh, I, no, sweet. I really don't, actually. Fuck them. I, I don't need to hear them making excuses and how it's all a coincidence and we didn't mean that at all and it's reference to this or it's a reference to that and fucking socialist this and proud American that. I, I don't I don't need to hear their bullshit. They're a fucking bunch of Nazis. <laughs> a bunch of white supremacist Nazis. We all know that. <clears throat> yeah, sourcing. Exactly. Yeah, if it was if it was just just a coincidence and just an accident, then FYI, you've got a shit ton of Nazi um like paraphernalia or uh imagery or iconography all over your store. Just FYI. Maybe get rid of it all. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, what? Hey, Bisky. Glazy, what's the point of that map? You do realize where all of that red is, nobody lives, right? Here's 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 a fun. This is this is fun, right? <clears throat> Eh, throat's a little rough, Biscay, but that's through my own doing. Um, so here's your map. I don't know what you're attempting to argue, Glazy. Um, <laughs> uh, but you see all that red? Nobody lives there. That is the lowest population density areas of the country, basically. Everywhere blue is where people live. What do you mean, we, Glazy? You're a fucking socialist. At most, you're a goddamn liberal. What's this we, Glazy? You ain't in that camp. They fucking sniff you out in a heartbeat, my man. Okay, Glazy, I just did some rough math. <clears throat> so you know. 
those other areas that don't own any guns own approximately 80 million firearms. Rough estimate. Just back of the book, back of the napkin bar calculations. Those those areas that don't own any guns own approximately 80 million firearms. They're not exactly defenseless and sitting ducks. Oh, and by the way, those areas that you pointed out again, they have larger amounts of disposable income than the other ones. They're in a more financially secure situation in their lives and thus can afford equipment to protect themselves. You're an idiot, Glazy. I'm, I'm going to be as kind as I possibly can. We're going to do this ruthlessly. We're going to do this quickly, like ripping a Band-Aid off. If you actually believe this, you're a fucking idiot, Glazy. That's just it. You're, you, you're an idiot. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't even begin to have that conversation if you truly believe that. Yeah, likely younger have access to better health care, are in better shape uh, across the board, have more disposable income. They are in a better situation to defend themselves across the board. And if you think that the Democrats coming into power means everybody's going to give up their guns, then you clearly don't understand gun culture even outside of like NRA Republican gun culture. Nobody's giving up their guns. This is America. Even if you're a liberal gun owner, even if you're an SRA, especially if you're an SRA member. Did you know there's a Socialist Rifle Association, Glazy? Did you know anarchists and socialists have their own version of the NRA? Huh. Yeah. Glazy's a libtard. What'd you expect? Um, yes, yeah, so Glazy, once again, stop being a dumbass. Oh, is this the, uh, the uh, adjusted one? Oops, no, toggle back over. Yeah. Hey, Sir Yogi Wan. Thank you for the biddies. <clears throat> this <laughs> this is towards the pills for the headache from the ignorant comments. Thank thank you. Um <laughs> thank you, Sir Yogi Wan. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the biddies. Uh red pill certified. Adorable. Um and Oh yeah, let's do a net revenue. That's that's a solid one. Fucking A. <laughs> let me kill let me kill the chat comment so you can see on that side and i'll even uh where's mine there we go <laughs> this is a 2004 oh that means it's even more disproportionate now isn't it uh sweet like that that means this would be even more disproportionate because the red states got more broke and the blue states got more money since since 2004 like this is yeah, like this is even more, this would be even more warped now. Yeah. They have less money. They have lower health. They have older population. They're fucked, man. They're fucked. Hey, Puka. 
Puka the Duka. Puka, Puka, Puka. Um, I used to wear Puka shells back in back in high school, back in the 90s when Puka shells were in. I had a Puka shell necklace. I also had one of those beaded, the metal beads, like the uh, fucking the ones that connect to each other. <clears throat> I had one of those as well. <laughs> Jesus, I remember those. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find one. Mm. Yeah, one of these. Like one of these things. Yeah, whatever this is. Fuck off. It's supposed to be EDM. Yeah, sure. Again, EDM. Yeah, one of those fucking things. Yeah, Cassie. I always, I, mine were always smaller. Actually, you know what? I think I found one the right size. There you go. This is approximately the size of the one I wore. Yeah. Right diameter, right length. And can I find a puka shell necklace that easy right out of the gate? It's same, almost the same ends too. Same sort of screw on ends. Yeah. God, fucking nineties, man. Best decade, best fucking decade. We had we had the internet, but no cell phones to record, like no smartphones to record video on and upload it to the internet. So, best decade. Swede, if you've got um, if you've got any tips on that one, Swede, I'd I'd be interested because one of these days I may be in the market for one of those, like you know, in the coming months, and I would like to be able to wear one without, you know. That hand is not at the point where I can do that with it yet. Just pulled on some stitches. That's all. <laughs> stupid. <clears throat> uh, sweet. I have no intolerances to uh, really any materials or any metals. So let me know, man. Um, Anya, Gen X ain't got no internet skeletons. I, I I am on the cusp. I'm an elder millennial, so I am right on the cusp. Um, plenty of Gen X friends, that sort of thing, um, but young enough to have some internet skeletons. <laughs> I think, I hope, I think I buried them well enough, but they're out there, man, and if, you know, they ever get uncovered, I just got to own them. That's all. I, I'm, I'm old enough, wise enough, and man enough to just own it now. So, young, dumb, high as fuck, and full of cum, right? Like, what are you, what are you, what are you gonna do? Um, Marcus, yeah, the SRA sells some very interesting merch. Um, Cassidy, I, I, I'm most, most modern iterations that I've seen. I don't count as Gen X. I'm not quite, I'm missing, uh, I'm missing by like a, a year and a half, basically. Elder millennial sounds like some eldritch demon. I'll take it, Puka. I, I am the elder millennial. <laughs> um. Sourcing. I've talked about that at length before with with some of the um, 
the the uh, the Gen Zers that like you can't even begin to comprehend. There's a few people that there are a few people throughout history who understand what it means to be like Gen X elder millennial to have one foot in the analog era and one foot in the digital era. There's ver there's only certain groups throughout all of history of humanity that understand the feeling that to be born to the uh, to the world of uh, of the horse and carriage and then come up with the horseless carriage right to be born in the world that did not have sustained flight to bear witness to the Wright brothers doing uh, sustained flight and then NASA in the same lifetime right like there's there's very there's there's an isolated group of people throughout all of human history that understand the feeling that some of us actually are living with in a day to day to have experienced the analog and to have come up with it but to have been just young enough to catch and ride the wave of the digital surge to truly have one foot in both sections of humanity's technological development it is a truly unique and i think privileged um position to hold yeah <laughs> change will never replace horses change my mind um <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is it is a thing. Yep, Angie, for sure. Oh, pay phones. Hey, rabbit. Oh, yeah. I remember that sales pitch, rabbit. I remember that bullshit sales pitch. Hey, it's it's TV without advertisements. Sure, it costs money, but, you know, you don't have to wait through all of that other stuff. Just right off with that bullshit. Remember when you got your uh, 56k modem? Oh, Jesus. I remember like 300 baud. Um, um, I would argue sourcing. I would argue they don't. I would argue they don't. Um, yeah, because the the I would I, my argument would be that the, the climate collapse actually started happening a lot of years ago and that we're just like like is common with human beings we just didn't notice you know we were busy doing other stuff but historically when the when the uh, historians write this chapter in the book i think i think it starts a while ago um <laughs> uh yes um the world actually ended in 2012 the mayans were correct what we're living in is a shared delusional hellscape um it's it's the collective consciousness of humanity shutting down um and it just seems like an eternity that's all <sighs> what the fuck is your problem today matt what the fuck is your problem Holy shit, fuck our, uh, what the fuck, man? What's your fucking deal? What, why are you got your panties all in a fucking bunch? I'm a fucking ghost unsub and fucking, if you want to be a little bitch about shit, man, I fucking answered your question at length. I was on another fucking tangent talking to other people. The world does not revolve around you. Jesus fucking Christ, man. What is your issue? Start typing, bitch. What's the question?
Yeah, I'm with Glazy. Fuck me. What a fucking childish thing. Holy shit. Grow the fuck up. That's my that's my answer to whatever bullshit question you may have, Matt, is grow the fuck up. Holy fuck, man. No, type your fucking question. What do you want? Jesus goddamn Christ. I'm gonna fucking take my toys and go home if you won't play with me and give me all of the attention. Never mind the fact that we were having a conversation as a community. Never mind the fact that other people exist in chat. Never mind the fact that this isn't your fucking stream. I'm a unsub. I'm gonna take my $2.50 and go away if you won't answer every question I have immediately. Yeah, your username's wrong. Links, Links, are you okay? I know you took some time off. I hope you're doing well. Good dad, Krusty. <laughs> I'm glad all my kids are growing up. Hey, banana, banana. Ooh. Um. Yeah, egg, Bobby. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Glad to hear it, Lynx. Glad to hear it. Me, me, me Mondays. All right, everybody. Everybody, work. Everybody, hang on. Everybody, stop. Everybody, stop the conversation. Everybody, let's. Never mind our stroll down memory lane. Never mind the fact that we were on an entirely different topic. Everybody, stop. All right? We have to go through Matt. Matt is Fun's chat log together, and we have to figure out what he was asking so I can address it, so I can earn his $2.50 and his attention, okay? Everybody, just, I, I know, I know. Puka, feel free to go piss. The piss is more productive. <laughs> Sweet. Except that's not the answer. See, here's the here's the okay. So is everybody here's here's. Matt responds to the earlier comment about fucking, um, yeah, links, yeah, for sure. Responded to the earlier comment about the differentiation between libertarian and fucking anarchist and is still on about it, by the way, still on about it. So what I'm trying to get at with the outside philosophical comment is that when you talk to and meet libertarians and talk to anarchists and ask how should we change the world and they both say give people ultimate freedom, that isn't an anarchist response. Not only 
are you not understanding anarchist position? You're straw manning an anarchist position. Yes, libertarians do believe in like ultimate freedom. Anarchists believe in uh, maximizing freedom to the point where it does no longer infringe upon other people's freedoms, not ultimate freedom. I do not have the freedom to fucking hunt you. And you don't even understand the anarchist position and you, by your own admission, are being debate lordy trying to get into the nitty gritty of it. If I were dropped in that society, I would do all the research and fully execute a completely communal state. No, you would. Based on what I'm seeing here, no, you wouldn't. Because you haven't done basic level research about anarchism and you're doing this shit. So clearly you wouldn't do all of the research. And execute a completely communal state and everyone else would also comply because they will eventually figure out the right way. Or I would do the research and fully execute my individual protection, success, and wealth and only do things based on individual values. There's not a fucking question there. There's literally not even a fucking question mark. Sourcing. Thank you for the gift sub. Links, welcome back in the club. All oh, sourcing and another one's about to pop for Carpe. Thank you, sourcing. There's not even a question mark. The next actual question was, did you just say I was a white supremacist when we were talking about that article fucking miles back that Swede was talking about, uh, that Swede shared? And then again, do you think I'm a white supremacist? Yeah, do I, 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 don't, I don't fucking think so. Are you? And then he literally admits he's being selfish and trying to get Kai's opinion because I'm an anarchist debate lord. The guy who literally won't go on the Twitch panels and debate people. The guy who literally avoids having to do this. Hey, Justin, we're having a moment. Bear with me. Everybody go follow Justin if you're not uh, already following. Hope your stream was well. Um, Well, that was um, definitely worth the time that we took to do it. 100%, for sure. Um, did somebody ask fucking something? Bisky, um, I would be classified as left wing. Uh, the right wingers definitely would classify classify me as left wing, and traditionally, anarchist milieu lies within the left wing. So there you go. No worries, Bisky. Well, that was totally worth it. Uh, Bisky, you, you, it, all are welcome. The The only standard is, is well, there's a couple. Can you hang? Can you hang? If we start talking about, like, you know, queer degeneracy and kinky shit or, you know, uh, leftist re uh, revolutionary actions taken in Catalonia, are you going to melt down? Are you going to have a fucking, like, a, 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 you know, a, a, just an absolute fit about it? You probably would want to find a, a different space. If you just be like, yeah, whatever, I can hang. Let's have the fucking, let's have the conversation, right? Like, I, I got I got a leather provider if you need a collar, you know, like, or yeah, fuck yeah. Like, you know, if you can hang, hang. You're, you're more than welcome. Yeah. We I can hang like an orangutan. 
<laughs> and Justin, I'd get it wrecked. And a boy, Justin, that's that's the right response, my man. Um, how did you? Uh, sorry about that, Justin. I was on a bit of a tear because somebody didn't get the, get what they felt to be their their fair share of parish social attention do, uh, because they gave me two dollars and fifty cents one time. Um, so sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't properly address you, Justin. How, how was your stream? What did y'all get up to? Did you have a good one? Puka, it's because they are, it's because they are, it's why I hate that stuff. I despise it. And I'm trained in speech and debate, right? Like it's not actual debate. It's not debate. It's not debate. It's arguing. And I'm okay with arguing, but let's call it what it is. It's arguing. It's not, it's not debate. Debate has a format. It's structured. That's not what that shit is. Today, today on, uh, today on our stream, we're going to have 12 panelists argue. Cool. Cool. Not, oh, we have a debate panel going. No, you don't. Stop abusing these words. They have meanings. <laughs> yeah, Oxford style gang rise up. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, Ron Hubward. I still love your name, by the way. Um, don't you want to argue with Destiny? No, I, because Destiny's not my uh, not my type. I do want. I would love to have a conversation with Vosh, though. I think we'd actually get along, like behind the scenes, not not on stream, because he gets performative. I can get performative. You know, no, not on stream. But I I think if I had a conversation with Vosh behind the scenes, I think we'd just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Fair enough, Axel. I don't tune into Dylan's either, so I don't know. I've been invited, but no. Uh, not to the 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 pan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was it? Is, is does Dylan? Dylan? Does Dylan run the the hippy dippy one? Is that is that Dylan? They tried to, they tried to get me, like somebody a while ago. Either way. Yeah, he's the hippie dippy good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan Derns. Exactly. Change approved. <laughs> Carpe, I don't need your warning. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. I don't need your warning. I was planning on it. <laughs> I don't do that stuff. I don't do the debate panels. I don't do that sort of shit. I know I should if I wanted to grow the community faster and that sort of thing, but I can't do what I do with like... Hassan levels, let alone, you know, <clears throat> I can't do it with like 250 people, let alone Hassan levels, right? Like it requires some individualized attention to do what I do. So I'm okay with it. Herodimus Prime, pay attention to me. 69 biddies. Yes, yes, Herodimus. Uh, I am, I am paying attention to Herodimus. I'm, I'm, I'm there we go. I'm, I've yep, got your name on my screen. I am staring at your name. You have my undivided attention right now, Herodimus. And that was 69, uh, 69 cents worth of attention. <laughs> uh, um, Elrond. Yeah, from what I understand, Dylan's educated. Like, you know, it seems like it, good people good people i don't have an issue i it's just it's the space it's the, the 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 tonality of those spaces that i i can't i cannot abide <laughs> the dude does not abide uh try exclamation tanky in chat glazy and you will find out mm. 
<laughs> Thanks, parasocial relationship has been validated. <laughs> Last time I watched a Dylan Burns debate debate was when a black woman got harassed off the panel because of a complete lack of moderation. Right wing bullshit. I can't with those people. Interesting likes. Um, uh, Carpe is on cooldown, <laughs> but, but Glazy got to it. Um, no, oh, don't teach the right wingers this word. Eh, they already know it, man. They already know it. All right, what was the wall of text? Let me scroll back. Matt. Oh, we already played this, man. We already played this. Um, give me a minute. I don't really know how you operate, sweet. I'm <laughs> tempted to say you'll be punished. But <laughs> See how you like it. Because, holy shit, Matt is... Matt, you're deluded. I'm reading your chat history. Because fucking from that wall of text, Matt said I talked to you about doing debates like a month ago. So I scrolled back a ways. Um, Matt is actively going around communities, apparently, according to his own chat log here. Um, saying, spreading the word that I fuck people up in debates... Like, literally, um, and then a month ago, let's see, a month ago, let's see, this is, this is current, right? So let's take it back, um, I don't know, um, but like a month ago, I can go back to February and you haven't asked anything. I asked you about debate oh months ago. All right, months ago. Let's let's scroll back months just just in case. Is there any any mention of the word debate? The first time the word debate even comes out of your mouth is on January 29th. Um, where you were talking about typical debates, like, uh, partisan, uh, partisan debates, uh, and then immediately that I, I fuck people up in debates, spreading the word sort of shit, and then never anything mentioned again until today. It's almost like keep having chat logs at our disposal proves that the fuck it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh, Nubbins McNubbins, right, RZ? Yeah, Glazy, I wish I had. I wish I knew. Um. So, um, 
Nubbins McNubbins. Uh, banned you for not obeying his fascist mods. What did you do, RZ? What did you do, RZ? <laughs> um, in the end, it was also him who ran away from debating me. All right, well. I don't know what you fucking drank or who slipped what in your tea today, Matt, but it seems like it's it seems like it's a weird day for you, man. We were having a good fucking time in here. Fair enough, RZ. You do. Yeah, I, I that is true. That is true. Um, yeah, RZ, you've been You've been banned and timed out, actually, RC. <laughs> I think the ban was probably a, a mistake or something, and we undid the ban, or I don't know. But you've got a you've got a timeout and a ban on your record, RC. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, RC, you you've caught a ban. Um. Yeah, Glacy's Glace, got Glacy's got four timeouts and a fucking ban. <laughs> Glacy's ban was, uh, I think, mistake ban though, and we undid the mistake ban. But yeah, fucking Glacy's got four timeouts. <laughs> Cave has a ban as well, um, and two timeouts. Um, the timeouts were probably earned. Um, the the, the ban, um, the ban I think was accidental. Yeah, Wither has an accidental ban as well. No timeouts. Uh, Anya, you are at zero, uh, zero and zero with no mod comments on you either. Um, <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, Elrond, mod friendly fire is a thing. I've done it, all of the mods have done, well, not all of my mods. I don't think Withers had a misclick yet, I don't know. Um, but most of the mods have a misclick on their run. Uh, the, some of the newer mods, like Angie and Wither may not have misclicks yet. Don't know. <laughs> Fells like veteran showing scars, yeah, basically. Um... When did that happen? Wither. When did you just time out uh, fucking Matt? Whoops, I misclicked. <laughs> um, hey, Biking Cat, thank you. Uh, thank you for the follow. Um, Wither. Um, it dops a thousand yards. You weren't there, man. You weren't there. Uh, you banned Nightbot before and Streamlabs for my stream on purpose before. I run my own bot. Uh, the Proudly Radical bot is locally hosted, so like I I run my own uh, my own bot on that regard. So if I wanted the bot to shut up or do something, like I I could I have programmatic control over the bot on this channel. Like I can I I script stuff and some of the responses are scripted responses and that sort of stuff. Um. Bisky, it's it's not un unearned. Let's just put it that way, Bisky. It's not unearned. Uh, RZ, no, RV isn't here right now. Uh, RV, RV has some life stuff going on. Um, oh yeah, sourcing for sure. I, 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 <clears throat> the bot, uh, the Discord bot is um custom controlled and the um the twitch bot is locally hosted and extensible no i do not do song requests lazy 
Um, nope. No song regrets cues on the bot um, because of DMCA fucking copyright strike bullshit stuff. Welcome to, welcome to intellectual property and the rentier class and why it should be dissolved or abolished. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, holy shit. Nice hair, Chris. You have a nice head of hair, Chris. And a hell of a braid. Did you do the braid yourself, Chris? Because that's that's a hell of a braid job. Oh, Jesus Christ, sourcing. That's a hell of a one. Biscay, um... That kindness was extended initially, and then they got... <clears throat> the empathy is only so far. There's a, there's a limited pool. And when you start taking away from chat, when you start taking away from the stream, when you start yelling about how you need extra attention and shit like that, when you become a disruptive influence, well, yeah, that only goes so far. Yeah, everybody agrees, Chris. Your hair is fucking banging. Like, Discord's fucking, like, <laughs> multiple people. Like, you got banging hair, Chris. Good on you. And that's a nice, solid braid work. Um... Last night, you braided it yourself. Rock on, Chris. Nice. I genuinely wanted to hear Kai's thoughts specifically on it, and then over and over when he acknowledges every chat before and after you, maybe it's parasocial and entitled, but it feels not good. Matt, you didn't tag me. The question was never tagged at me. And then the only times you tagged me after that was saying, did you just say I'm a white supremacist? Do you think I'm a white supremacist? And at this point, I'm literally, and by the next time you tag me in your chat list about if you've got to move on from annoying self-tangents, I was literally not even looking at chat, looking right down the barrel and having a conversation basically, uh, or uh, monologuing about the, the 90s and technology and uh, uh, fucking the, the people who live on the cusp of technologies. I'm literally doing a whole fucking spiel. And by that point, the point where you finally fucking tag me about this shit... I'm not paying attention to chat at that point. And then you decide to have a fucking hissy fit. All right. So you didn't tag me in the question that was important to you, which everybody fucking knows. If you need to get my attention, at least tag me at the very least. All right. I'm over this shit. Go fucking walk your dogs. Get the fuck out. Come back another day. This is not your day, man. This is not your day. 
I know you're caught up on the whole difference between anarchist and libertarian thought, but you're just going to have to live with that thought for another day or three. And I'm, I'm, I'm done, man. Yeah. No. Like maybe next time, here's a word of advice. Here's a word of advice. Adults don't threaten to take their toys and go home. Okay? This is what pissed me off. This is what annoyed me. Okay? Sure, you sub. And for that, I'm grateful. For that, Food Not Bombs is grateful. For that, other people in my community are grateful. Okay? Thank you for that. Thank you for those contributions. That does not entitle you to act like a fucking brat. You do not to get. Uh, you does not mean you get to say things like uh, that. I'll just unsub and leave. Then shit like that. That's that's the sort of shit children say. All right. So you didn't get your question answered. Tag me and say, hey Kai, I know you're busy and I know you're talking about other things, but if you have a moment, can you please refer back to the uh, to a previous question? I don't think I tagged you, but if you could just pop the logs. Uh, that'd be that'd be great. Um, you may not be able to do something, something, man. Don't act like a fucking child. It's it's weird. It's weird. Like we can't. I'm done. I'm fucking done. Ah. <sighs> Swede, god damn it, Swede, you are, Swede needs, Swede needs bonked with the horny stick today, it seems like. Swede, brat is a thing in the kick scene, so, uh, yes, brats are ones, who, uh, are subs who purposefully undermine their, uh, their dom's wishes. Brat is an actual technical term within the kink scene. Um... Is that is that the bonk? It is the bonk. There's the horny bonk. Um <laughs> uh, A primal switch brat. Interesting. Um bonk it slow then fast. Um I don't know the the necessarily the connotation of primal within a kink scene. I mean, I can I can sort of contextually fill in the gap. Um, Switch is somebody who alternates between dom and sub. Uh, they're comfortable fulfilling either role. They may have a preference. They may not have a preference. Um, and then um, brat is, of course, what we just explained. Kvass, I... I, I... I would prefer not to use the pri uh, the term primordial. Um, it, it's I mean it's derived from the Latin of to uh, be the first or um, the, of first order. Um, I would probably lean away from using the term primordial, but I I would under I, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't jump on your case. I'd probably, you know, I'd probably bring the the, the word choice to your attention. So like, eh, you might want to tweak the verbiage on that a little bit. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't jump on you with that one. Um. Hey, the GIF. Um. Welcome, welcome. Um. We're just. Have a good night, Matt. Have a good night. I, like I said, you're not banned. You're not timed out. But, man, it's not your day. Like, come back when... Yeah. Come back another time, Matt. You have grog, boss. It's solid work if you've got grog going on.
Interesting nonsense, yeah. Uh, Bisky, if you aren't already, you're... Oh, Jesus, that's a new account. I'm not gonna issue that one out. Um, yeah, fucking Grog. Um, you have... I'm Kavos, as do I, but Grog isn't in my collection. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, Akashoga, my favorite, my literal, like, my favorite, my favorite turn of phrase. Absolute, fra absolute favorite by miles and miles and miles for multiple reasons is Halcyon Days of Yore. Ah, the Halcyon Days of Yore. This means the good old days. But Halcyon Days of Yore, it's got amazing mouthfeel. The, the linguistics centered around that are just amazing. The, 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 the definitional requirements to the halcyon days of yore, right? Like the contextual information that that, that brings to the forefront of the conversation. I, I just, I absolutely adore my favorite turn of phrase in English by miles and miles and miles. Halcyon days of yore has been for years. Hey, Adam. Uh, have you seen my pics of my old butt in Discord? Uh, no. No? I don't think so, Krusty. Shared in commons. Oh, uh, well, that, that one, that's not where that sort of stuff goes. Um... Um, uh, uh, can you spell that? H A L uh, H H A L C Y O N space D A Y S space O F space Y O R E Halcyon days of yore. Hey Ace, how you doing, Ace? My Ace. Am I Antifa? Yes, I am all of Antifa. Um. Yep, 100%. <laughs> uh, I, 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 am, I am the literal walking embodiment of Antifa. It, it's in chat. Um, Brown eyed. Like, just, just look up a little bit. Like, there are multiple people who spelled it out in chat. Um, yep, literally the CEO of Antifa. Uh, CIA agent, CEO of Antifa, Soros operative, um, member of the Illuminati. Yes. Yep, I have protect, perfected the multi-form technique to be every single Antifa member at once. Uh, the gift, I, I, uh, though I have sacrificed my fair share of goats, of course, uh, you know, on the full blood moon um, to our Dark Lord, H Hail Satan. Um, I, I generally don't count myself amongst the Satanists. Hey, cat. Oh, cat! We already had a. We already. We already. Jesus Christ, cat! Oh man, we were having a good time, cat. We were having a good time. We were having a good time, and then just, you know, um. Jesus Christ, are we like Angie? We're gonna have to start mate putting that message in, aren't we? Like, we're going to have to put that message in somewhere on the regular. Do I have to put the bot in? Like, I'll put a timed message. You know what? That was a good fucking, um, I, that was a good something. 
Angie, I'll, I'll put it on like a timed fucking message for the bot. Because apparently that's a thing we have to just like contend with now. Um, I'm literally going to call the, um, the, the timer command for this parasocial attention. How often should that, that be triggered? Um, hello, Tech Guy 420. Um, I mean, how, how many, like, how many minutes before that, that gets obnoxious to see? Uh, anytime 13 minutes you know what I like 13 as a number I'll take it here we go Okay. Um, yeah, sweet. I'm open to that conversation anytime you want to, you want to have it. So just let me know. Um, all the good left just worship the crawling chaos in the black goat of the woods with a thousand young hell. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, that, I'm not going to try. Um, yeah, links. I added that. I, um, the, the full one, um, good call on that. Th uh, the links like, you know, right there fucking um i added um you can also tag him or a mod <laughs> there you go um I mean, other than the uh, uh, Adam, uh, other than tw uh, the port 2743, which is, I think, the showstopper port. Um, no, I don't know that. No, it's not showstopper. It's um, uh, um, no show go. I think it's no show. Fuck it. I'm just going to look it up. Um, just three. Yeah, it's no show go. I was right. Um, yeah, other than like uh, 2743, just check the chart really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing I know. Um, I'll be in Vegas through the third through the seventh, at least planned currently. All right, Bobby, let me know. Uh, let me know, Bobby. And we'll go to a, like, uh, we'll go to a tea bar or something. We'll hang out. Um, well, I don't drink, so I, I feel bad going to a bar because it's just taking up seating and shit like that, right? But, you know, tea bar, I'll, I'll consume. So at least I can, you know, be a patron of the establishment that we're taking up room in. Nice, boss. Fair enough. Uh, oh, be gay, do crime. Okay. All right. Interesting, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other kind of T ref, like T E A. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely way more obscure. Uh, 
Um, all right. Let me just scroll up here. Just give me a second. Uh, blame the middle school death metal phase, atheist Andy phase for my worship of Lucifer. Fair enough. Um, tech guy, uh, my Monday is... It's okay. It's okay. My Sunday was good. For those of you who were here. <laughs> uh, my Sunday was good. Um, tech guy always, always looking for chairs, aren't we? Um, IT cons for burned out IT consultant, spent my entire life in technology. We're always looking for a good chair, aren't we? Um, I can give you a link to where this chair, where you can buy this chair. Um, if you so choose, this chair comes highly recommended from me and others. Um, the best, if re uh, the best review of this chair I have ever found was from one of our, our fellow technicians who was in this, in the chair force, the air force. For those of you that don't know, this, this is what the other, um, the other branches call the air force is the chair force because most of them just sit around on their ass all day. He had, um, he had schlepped this chair he'd break it down reassemble it he had schlepped it i think three or four different uh tours of duty so many base changes so many reassignments and it survived um this mesh was i was worried as well because it is sort of a, just like a, a flexible rubber woven mesh right if you keep it away from sharp stuff zippers anything anything metal like if you've got zippers or something on your back pocket, you could fuck it up. Um, buttons, that sort of stuff. If you keep metal abrasive stuff away from this mesh, I've had this chair for seven years. Seven years. Um, so there you go. Yes, the butt part. The butt part is mesh as well. Um, links yes um it is it's not herman miller expensive but it's on the the higher end of chair cost for sure uh, um okay whatever this song is it fucking needs to just not there we go um blood stuff here is the place you don't want to buy it from, but here, here is here is an Amazon link. You can get it from, like, um, you can get it from like office supply companies, um, Office Depot, all that sort of stuff. Um, you can you can get it elsewhere, but that is the model. That is that is the the make and model of of the chair. Um, so if you want to see more about it, there's a link to Amazon. But like I said, you search for a Work Pro Quantum 9000 chair. You can find them in Office Depot and all others, all sorts of places. It's comfortable as fuck. It's got multiple styles of adjustment. The the uh, the armrests do this. They do this. The, the the seat slides back and forth and tilts and the back tilts and the headrest adjusts and all of those sorts of stuff. Um, and yes, it's it's got a nice little spring to it and it's comfortable. Um, where the legs, like the front portion of the seat, there is actually a, a cushion there. So like where your legs come over, it minimizes the pressure point there as well. So yeah. Um, How low does it go? I don't know. I'm not going to adjust it because I like the adjustment on it right now. <laughs> but pneumatic cylinders for um, for chairs of this uh, of this nature are standardized. You can go on eBay and get longer and shorter pneumatic cylinders and change them out. So there you go. <laughs> um, this is literally the one I've had my eye on and I've just been waiting for a personal review of the SAG so I tell them to sponsor you I, it, tech guy I have to say it may be weight dependent I don't know I don't weigh a shit ton so I don't know what happens if you put 220 pounds on this regularly for years 
I, I can't I can't vouch for like weight dependent sort of sag. Um, but yeah. Oh, did ladies does ladies eight two nine not get the attention they wanted? Um you can confirm Kai does not weigh a ton. Yes. Cat and Cat and I have hugged each other, and I can confirm Cat is a big boy. <laughs> and I am not. <laughs> it is very much sort of a, a one-sided uh, experience for us hugging each other. It's like, oh shit. There's like uh, something there to hug, and for me, it's like, are are you even there? <laughs> uh, oh Jesus Christ! All right, all right, sweet, I got you. Let me let me pull you from the. Oh, where the fuck are you? So many goddamn. Uh, there we go. There we go. I said I just sent you a DM, uh, Swede. Um. All right. Um, I saw a van life woman on YouTube turn her driver's seat into a toilet. Pass. Hard pass. Hard, hard pass. Hard pass. Um, 170 on a bad day. Check. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, yeah, it comes, it comes disassembled like any other fucking office equipment in a box and reassemble it and you'll be good to go. Holy shit, that's a chair. Swede, do you happen to own one of these? Because this is a piece of sort of custom kit that you would afford you would be able to afford and own swede this is a hell of a thing this is a hell of a thing sweet do you own one of these swede come on fess up fess up sweet do you own one of these because I know this is a like the limited edition sort of shit too. This is this is an art piece amongst other things. Br Brown, like, this is this is anything. Your lips are sealed. Sweet owns one of these. Sweet fucking I swear to God, Sweet, if you own one of these fucking things, I think I can show this on I think I think I can show this on stream. I, I it's just a fucking chair. It's just a chair. It, it's it's just a chair. I've got to be able to show this on stream, right? Fuck it. Introduced in 2004, containing over 76 individual pieces of wood, hand-built, 19 multi-part straps, an adjustable neck, ankle, foot, elbow rest with an optional self-bondage mechanism for the wrist straps. Literally each one built to spec. The cost in $2,004 came out to $2,000. Only eight were ever built. Pictured here is number three. Each iteration got improved as they went along as well. A 
apparently it's more comfortable than you would think. When I talk about, this is the person who built it, when I talk about ergonomic design, if you ever get a close look at one of these, you'll note that everything has a certain incline. In wood and metals, right angles are easy. They're very comfortable for the builder and the materials lend themselves to right angles, but right angles are not comfortable. The seats at fast food joints are made at right angles so you won't be comfortable to, enough to loiter, but by, built, uh, by tilting the seat, inclining the back, and swinging out the feet, this chair, even without padding, is actually very comfortable. Some have managed to stay in it for several hours at a stretch. Yeah, Bobby, totally talking to yourself. <laughs> Believe me, you could show it. Um, <laughs> safe chair. Now, that's a safe chair. You're not falling out of that chair. Exactly. Um, your link's just... God damn. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of leather, too. I mean, that's... that's dude, that is... That is a piece. That is a piece. And like, it's an art piece to boot. And Swede may own one. Swede may actually own one of those. One of eight. Yeah, sweet fucking, this is an independent contractor from the Pacific Northwest. Holy shit, sweet. You had somebody. Who is this? Paul Mauser Studios. So, Swede, please tell me how you know Paul Mauser. <laughs> Excel. Talk about commodity fetishization. Yeah, so how do you know Paul, Swede? How'd you meet him? Because clearly you know Paul Mauser. And clearly you got one of his art pieces. Art. So how'd you meet him? <laughs> uh, well, Lynx, then he can DM me that story. <laughs> In a dungeon. Yeah, basically. Through other connections, I've met quite a few people. Yes, you have, sweet. Yes, you have, fucking and i'm i'm, gra I'm glad i'm i'm in the periphery of that network suite in case i ever need to leverage it it's, it's who you know folks it's who you know oh it is, his name isn't paul mauser okay cool <clears throat> if i'm ever out your way swede I mean, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity territory. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to sit in that chair. You know that, right? Like I have to give it a test run. Like I have to give it a test run, especially this, this iteration about like the self, self bondage mechanism for the wrist straps. Like that's brilliant. Like that's, and that's piece of engineering like i i'm i uh, sweet i'm gonna need to take that for a fucking test drive like sh just there's no way around that i'm gonna fucking keep, i'm gonna search your goddamn house <laughs> i'm gonna fucking get turn some shit over looking for that piece you better own one motherfucker um <clears throat> Oh, cat! You have no idea. You have no idea, cat. The um, inter jumbo scrims. Good evening. Interesting, Swede. Um, I could show you. I I could show you some pictures of a dude here in town, cat. That's got a room. Uh, no, the pic isn't in Discord. Um, but I can put it there. I mean, fuck. 
it's in shared content. There you go. If if you if you missed it or whatever, the 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 chair is in the the picture of the chair is in is in shared content. Um, and you know what? While we're at it, I might as well add that psycho description as well. There you go. Um. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Those of you that watch um, Pitch Meeting. Um, yeah, there's a dude here in town, uh, Kat, that has a full room. Like, if I had to estimate... Um... Hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth of gear in his room. Yeah, like there's there's one dude here in town that I, yeah, high end, custom, quality, yeah, yeah. I think someone didn't have a backup plan for the release, and the self bondage release broke, and someone was in the chair for more than a few hours. Mm. Yeah, yeah, never. Uh, so it, one of the stories that I'm aware of. Um, oh yeah, caboose, hundred percent. Just check that shit right off. Um, one of the stories um, that I'm aware of, like, okay, not you know one one of the stories that I'm aware of. He got into a car wreck. Nothing too serious, but he had to be taken to the ER. Um, his sub was tied up at home. He, he was fucking with him. He went out to the convenience store to get like something like drinks or something like that. And he got into a car wreck on the way and was taken via ambulance to the ER. And w the, like, it was basically the next AM when he finally got to a phone and told somebody you need to get to my house and release them. Yeah. Never leave the premises. If you are going to do bondage play, never leave the premises. Um. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just one of those, like, underlined like bold highlight underlined like do not do that because it could go horribly wrong yeah uh no i don't think i've ever seen gerald's game angie you've always got the apropos of weird shit reference Oh, Jesus Christ. A couple tries to spice up their marriage in a remote lake house. After the d husband dies unexpectedly, the, the wife is left handcuffed to their bed frame and must fight to survive and break free. Oof. That is, uh, is essentially Gerald's game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Gaffodil. Yeah, the straights do it all the time. I mean, the gay community, like the, the gay BDSM community basically are the pioneers of a lot of stuff yeah the, the, a lot of what we know about safe play and like a lot of the the technological development surrounding it was done by the gay by the gay scene at one specific dude um and one specific dungeon contributed a lot to the community but yeah the straights are into it too for sure Uh, zip ties are, zip ties will cut. Zip ties will cut. Don't, don't do that sort of stuff. No. Soft ropes, silks, um, leather, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Yep. Gord would have been the other major contributor. Yep. Um, rock on Rev. You do not. Yeah, don't use paracord. Yeah. Um. 
<laughs> Cave. Um, Cassie, not the only story like that I've heard either. Yeah, it's the only... I've heard them, but that's the only one that I can say, like, that happened. That happened. Yeah. That one, like, I can... I can vouch for that one. That one happened. Um, inclusive dungeons. Um, there are. Um, please introduce Kink to the Kia, a Kia Summer Sales event. Ah. Uh, uh, you know what? Only experience I have uh, I have with BDSM was a girl who wanted me to call her something I'm not willing to ever call anyone. Hmm, fair enough, Adam. Everybody has their limits. Um, I have a, gr a friend who makes engraved acrylic paddles. I actually have one. Oh, interesting. I don't think I'd enjoy acrylic. I like a good leather. Um, I think metal even. Um, acrylic, I, I like the... It needs to be flexy. It needs to be bendable. It needs to be able, you need to be able to pop with it. You know, you bend it back, you stress it, and you pop with it. Um, yeah, acrylic, it's, yeah, I don't know how I'd, I'd have to try it. I'd have to try it. Um, Adam, I'm, I mean, Swede, you're not lucky enough to own one of the eights. <sighs> Swede, you have just broken my heart because I just thought like I had access to somebody who had one of those. And now I feel like I have lost that chair. Like that chair just went up in a house fire before my very eyes because of what you just did, Swede. This is all your fault. I, I just lost that chair. I lost one of those chairs because of that right there. Now I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a, se a sense of loss now, sweet. How dare you? How dare you steal that from me? Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> it's just everybody pile on, sweet. Just pile on. <laughs> Uh, why chair when swing? Uh, story, uh, Gemma, the, the swings are a dime a dozen. Swings are a dime a dozen. I was just winning one last night. So, yeah. Couldn't you just, like, build your own? I, Caboose, there's a level of craftsmanship going on there that, like, I could build one, but I couldn't build one to that level. Sinner. Yeah. Go on. Some of the shit I did last night. Oof. Um. <laughs> you disappointed streamer. Ah, uh, there's a dungeon in San Francisco that has one. Mental note, though. Uh, his day job is at a sign company that makes with giant sign routers, so he makes them out of all kinds of stuff. Interesting. Sinvention. All right. Just so you know, I took us over to just chatting. <laughs> um, okay. That definitely aren't stream. Those are definitely not stream safe. Uh, stream safe photos. Um, all ham all hammocks are bondage hammocks, though. Um, random fun fact: A game I'm play testing just added a guild feature. I've created a romance language only guild called the Latin Le uh, the Latin League under the motto "The strongest bonds are created through the through the tongue." I tried linking to a diagram of how to find the clitoris, but the game censored it. That sounds exactly like something you would do premarital. That sounds exactly like something you would do, for sure. Well, yes, Gemma. Yeah. Although, I mean, yes, yes. I, I was just, I was just, 
I feel like there needs to be more nuance there or something, but I, I, I can't. Good enough. Um, I mean, Foucault, I mean, of course, of course, one of the most expert analyses of power dynamics ever done was done by a perverted gay dude, a perverted French gay dude. Of course, of course. Foucault got up to all sorts of depravity. Um, to find the what now? Um, oh, oh wee wee. Uh, hey, this could be a whole lot of fun. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I love that my community are just a bunch of fucking degenerate fucks. Oh, I adore you people. Not gonna lie, the word depravity turns me on a little. Um. Yeah. I get it. Something, something takes one to no one. Oh, for, of course. Proudly. Yeah, Swede, like for sure. Fucking you, you redefined your image today, Swede. Straight up. perverted French gay dude comes up with the crazy shit and the perverted German gay dudes make it safe. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm, uh, I'm just a bit boring. Oh, Rev. Uh, hey, Big Bear. You should also have proudly degenerate in the same font as the DGEN logo. It's actually not a font, Cat. Um, but I under I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I, I will make one of those. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's actually not a font. Um, I wish it were, um, cool. I bet you do Kaiser. You looking for more strong boys to work on the farm with you, Kaiser. Hmm. Um, cat's looking to make more money than that though. <clears throat> Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I want to turn in that chair. I have to wait a couple of days because I'm still, <laughs> still sore. Um, fair enough, cat. And I'm sure there's some like ecologically driven, um, climatological disaster that's going to strike the Pacific Northwest too. So, you know, chances are they're going to see a surge in needing air conditioning or tech support or something. So, you know, always an option. Um, uh, it, did it go well, Gemma? Uh, I spent an hour and a half in an anti-poverty network new members meeting. I want lots of weed, but I'm not a strong boy. Oh, Adia. With, with modern technology and hormonal, uh, hormonal treatments, anybody can be a strong boy. <laughs> um, mainly a meet and greet. All right, fair enough. Interesting. The ca the clams and mollusks got fried in the uh, shells of the PNW. Um, uh, I'm British Columbia when the uh, heat heat wave happened. Interesting. Yeah, I suppose it was, it was inevitable. Um, hoping they'll call me to do some more real work for them, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're a perfectly capable human being. You're serviceable writer and creative uh, type. I'm sure there's plenty of things you can help out with. Um, so, and, and be sure to tell them that. 
be sure to be sure to you know I want to help um 120 something in BC oh yeah All right, well then It's all you can do, right, Gemma? You attended. You made yourself present. You made your, made them aware that you want to help. So that's that. Either they want your help or they don't. I. Um, <clears throat> you joined, um, social security income outreach access and recovery glazy. Um, today's weather said smoke <laughs> and the average, uh, the air quality index unhealthy, uh, better send that kind of BS back to the West coast. It's coming. It's coming to you, Angie. Fucking it's coming. Yeah. I mean, even if even if you got an opportunity to do some, um, <laughs> Swede, enjoy yourself, take care of yourself. Um, it's been an adventure, man. It's a, it's been an adventure. Ah, uh, tech guy. Oh, God, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon's gonna be your best deal. Probably is. I mean, you could try Home Depot or Office Depot or something like that. Uh, not Home Depot, but Office Depot. But, yeah. The truth of the matter is that you're probably going to find it easiest and cheapest off of, like, Amazon. Um, you could go to Work Pro directly. Um, but I don't, I don't know what sales, like, purchases from them directly look like. Um, oh, all right. Let me scroll back. Missed something. I know I missed something. Um, Seems like we should have the technology at this point to have massive farms of benign bacterial cultures whose only purpose is to metabolize CO2 in the atmosphere and release that to us by product. Yeah, sidewalk, it seems like we should be doing that, doesn't it? Um, put your hand up for desktop publishing and video production, etc. Um, are you good at video production, Gemma? Like, is that, do you do like editing and shit like that? Is that like a thing for you? Just, just duly noted. Have you ever done, um, have you ever done the skills exchange, um, on our Discord server, Gemma? Because if not, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always good to know what people are good at. Um, cheapest one, yeah, that's the cheapest one I've seen. Uh, McSecular's right. Um, Fucking tech, uh, <clears throat> tech guy. I was going to call you tech, bro. Tech guy 420. Look at the link mix secular put in chat. That's the cheapest one I've seen. $327.99 for it. Oh, and by the way, the chair comes with a 10-year warranty. Just FYI. Um, fair enough, Gemma, but, you know, next time you have a minute. Marcus, the skills exchange is just a listing of various community members who have a set of skills. Everybody's good at something in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just active listening, right? Everybody's good at something. The skills exchange is a channel on the Discord server where you type out and put in what you're good at, what you're, you're comfortable saying, if somebody appealed to me for assistance in this, this, or this, I could lend aid. It's not a guarantee that you're helping anybody. It's not you saying, I'm going to fuck, this is, I'm dedicating time to, or any, it's no promises or guarantees or any of that sort of thing. But keeping track of what the, uh, the community members are proficient at and could potentially aid in or lend advice in is sort of the backbone of mutual aid. And so we keep a skills exchange list of where people put in what they're good at. Um, 
Um, it is. Uh, you know what? I I'm pretty sure we're we've passed the point of dealing with fucking uh, what's his name. So I'll reinstitute it. Uh, give me one sec. Um. Discord link is, uh, the Discord uh, link command is now live again. Give me one second before the other one comes back online too. Uh, the profile one. Oh, that one's in, um, uh, geez, um, uh, channel. And now the channel profile one is live as well. Um, that executive chair better come with an intern for that price. Um, Puka, how are you fucking new on the server? Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> it's not Herman Miller expensive. Herman Miller chairs are fucking stupid, like $1,200 type shit. Um, Oh, Gaffodil, but the, the fucking rainbow flags for, like, the entire queer community. So, you know, it is what it is, right? But, yeah, yeah, uh, all of the offshoots have their own um, flags at this point. Yeah, it, it's just a thing that's occurred. And, and they had to go, uh, they had to go make up flags, um... Of their own, uh, the the gay flag, the LGBT. Uh, well, it's actually the LGB flag. Uh, it's its original iteration. Um, the, the the gay flag is the best one. I'm sorry because it's a straight like it's representative of a rainbow, and I I still think it's hilarious that gay people stole a, a natural phenomenon. <laughs> the rainbow's ours. We stole it. I, I, I think that's hilarious. We also took the word happy. Gay used to mean happy. And we're like, you know what? We're not only are we taking the rainbow, we're stealing happy from you too. <laughs> These are all ours now. We'll return them when you start behaving properly. Ah, you're welcome, Tech. Yeah, we'll have a gay old time. Um, my new Lego set has the extra ones as extra stripes. It looks way better because Lego people know how to use colors. They do. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Aka. Uh, Aka Shogi. Yeah, you can just cue it off of the bot. Uh, Viva, it was good. Um, it was good up until one ish, one, one thing. One thing made it obnoxious. Uh, one person made it obnoxious. Um, but beyond that, yeah, it's been good. Uh, Karina, Karina, oh, Karina, did you miss levels of degeneracy? Holy shit. Well, one, we learned Swede is a fucking pervert. Straight up. Swede, Swede is straight up degen. Stre Swede is straight up degen. Um, like, into it. Um, and yeah, knows some shit. Knows some shit that's shocking that he knows it. Um, and continued through the whole stream. Like, just dropping bombs the whole way through. Um, so yeah, you, you missed some of that. <clears throat> Do you might get me banned. Do you still children? I mean, not anymore. Um, um, Viking cat. Like it, it's just, you know, they, they scream, you got to fucking duct tape their mouths and they, you know, got to transport them over to the Soros center for like, you know, taking, uh, stealing their adrenochrome. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um, oh, 
Karina, were you here for the chair? If you weren't here for the chair, check shared content. In blood drinking, of course. Of course. Of course. How do they have it? <clears throat> yeah, I've... 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 <clears throat> no, Exol, I did not. Uh, Lynx, I, I have this thing I've been saying. You weren't around for when I started it. Um, but... Um, Biking, refresh, clo force close the app or uh, control F5 if you're on a browser. Um, I'm sick of, and Lynx, this is just me talking to you, Lynx, about the whole queer thing, older folk, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm sick of the infighting within the LGBTQIA plus community, LMNOPQRSTUVWXYZ. We're just, just too many fucking letters. There's too many goddamn letters. Um, so I am of the opinion that we need to knock off the letters, knock off the weird category division shit. We all just fly under the flag of queer. And while we're doing it, we take the letter Q. Um, so we just, we steal the letter Q. We're all queer. I don't care. You're intersex, asexual, aromantic, transgendered, fucking gay, lesbian. I don't, I don't give a shit. Everybody's queer now. And we take the letter Q away from the QAnon folk. Now, like, we'll, we'll do the same thing we did with Proud Boys. Go to the Proud Boys subreddit and see what, what it's about. It's all fucking gay dudes. Fucking, yeah. Proud Boys are now gay. Like, that's, that's, that's a thing we can do. We, we stole the fucking rainbow, for fuck's sake. We stole the fucking rainbow. All right, we stole the word "happy" from their lexicon. You think we can't take a, take a letter? We will fucking take a letter. We're gonna make Q the gay letter, just to spite the QAnon fuckers too. While we're at it, I think I think it's a good policy. We'll just merge everybody under the head un, uh, under the header queer. We fly the the letter Q as our symbol. And anytime these fucking QAnon morons to talk about Q, everybody just starts to assume they're gay. I think it's hilarious. Um, just Q is fine by me. So glad to hear someone else saying this. I could go for queer. Yeah, I, queer and on. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I have been advocating this for a little bit now. It's been a month or two, maybe. Th yeah, I don't fucking know. I don't keep track of time. Um, I think it's a good policy. We're all just que we're all just queer now. We're all queer. Get over it. And if you're older and you have some like negative feelings and trauma attached to the word queer, well, now's the time to move past it. Now's the time to deal with it. All right. <laughs> Fucking get over it. Um, you know, yeah, Q's a nice letter. I, I, honestly, I, 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 I'm all for it. I, I think it, beware the Q agenda. Yeah. Like I say, I honestly think it's a good policy. I think everybody who's something, Oh, Lynx! Lynx! You haven't been around, Lynx! Holy shit! Okay, so, Lynx, are you ready? Are, are, are you ready, Lynx? Nail polish and skirts. Yeah. Oh, hey, some sense. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, thank you, Puka. Um, free skirt spin. Yes, skirt goes spinny. Um, a uh, transatlantic trader. I wouldn't do that in public. You'd be ashamed of yourself. We have pictures of me recently out in public with the skirts, like at an art installation here in Las Vegas with one of my mods. So... Um, I wear them out all the time now. I wear, I wear them out all the time. They're comfortable as fuck. Yeah. 
Oh well, links. Um, technically, I fall under. It's it's qualified. Kez Kez will fucking school this shit. Technically, I'm mildly gender fluid. Uh, except I come at it from the transhumanist perspective rather than the like the whole other side. Like I just sort of I, we arrive at the same position. I just you know got there differently. Um, I don't give a shit about gender. You combine transhumanism with um, gender nihilism, and you end up with yeah. Why shouldn't I be able to wear a skirt and paint my nails? I don't assign any of this sort of stuff to it. Whatever. But it is a, a non a non binary expression of gender. Uh, uh, it is a non binary uh, gender expression. Therefore. Uh, mildly gender fluid, therefore falls under the header. So, I just don't see it that way. That's all. I mean... Of course, we know what a transatlantic trade is. Um, are you referencing the transatlantic slave trade? Um, because that's usually the thing that gets the transatlantic reference, quite frankly, because I doubt you're running baubles between Boston and Ireland. So, um, have you, have you managed to, I don't know, um, say anything yet after the you wouldn't wear that skirt in public you'd be too ashamed and you know it comment and then us literally immediately refuting you like so what you got my man see that's that's the thing about what it means to be Oh, you'd have to be on our Discord server. We have pics. We have video. Um, that's what it means to be an adult. That's what it means to be a real man, right? Quote unquote, is to not give a shit what like little peons like you care. If I want to wear a skirt, why shouldn't I wear a skirt? Alexander of Macedonia conquered the known world, and he wore a skirt. Pharaohs, Egyptian pharaohs, skirts. Chinese emperors, skirts. Spartans, skirts. Roman legions, skirts. Celtic warriors, skirts. Oh no. Some idiot can't tell the difference between, the, like, has assigned a gender identity to a piece of cloth and now they feel shame. Therefore, I should, right? Like, this is what it means to be an adult. This is what it means to be a real man. Right is to like deal with people like you. That wh why would your opinion matter to me at all? Oh, Gemma, there's so much. Yeah, skirts are better for your sperm. They are. You told the wife that and she understands about the skirt. Yeah, of course she does. Cause she Cause she's a she's a wonderful woman and you're lucky to have her, Krusty. <laughs> Captains. Yeah, it's it's absolutely it, like, you know. Aw, boo boo. Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. For sure I am. Yep. You got it pegged. No, no, Big Bear. No, this this person doesn't have anything. Hey, hey, transatlantic trader, want to get on air? 100%. Watch this, Big Bear. Gaffodil, I tell people, I tell cis people that I reject their gender identity just to see what happens. Um, yeah, it's almost like... No, no, I don't want to debate you. I'm not a debate bro, but I I am always interested in conversations. 
uh, conversations with disparate ideologies, conversations with people who have their heads firmly planted up their asses, p- conversations with people who are ignorant, conversations with people who are educated, people with convers- conversations with interesting people, conversations with boring people, conversations with the sexually adventurous, conversations with the prudish. I think I know which categories you'll be following in. But if you'd like, we can have a uh, theological discussion because I've been an ordained minister for over 18 years now. So, boo-boo, it'll be an interesting conversation. Oh, I, I won't I won't try to dunk on you. I mean, it'll, it'll inevitably happen. I mean, you know. Akashoga. Oh. <laughs> Surely you can best some rejects in the marketplace of ideas. Yeah, you can pick the topic if you want to have the conversation. Like whatever we talk about, you can you can you can decide. Oh man. I'm just I'm just some uh, I'm just some like degenerate faggot on Twitch, right? You got painted nails and a skirt. And, you know, some societal reject. You know, use its fancy multisyllabic words. No, no, I won't ban you, man. It's not how this shit works. You leave willingly. You tuck your tail between your fucking legs and you leave willingly. Or we just sit here and give you the attention you so desired. You needed the attention. You wanted it. You walked in and said that shit knowing you'd get some attention. Well, you got the attention. So what's up, man? You're not a coward, right? I'm sure you're not a coward. Then get on the air. Aww. Sweetheart, we've all heard worse. You literally don't have an effect on us. Like... Don't you realize that, like, do you do you understand what it would take to walk through someplace like the Deep South and be an openly gay man? It takes more balls than you will ever, ever have. You can't even imagine the strength of character and the willpower it takes to be trans or be gay or be black in an all-white town and knowing that you got to go to a store after sundown and the police are out there roaming the fucking streets. Right, most of my community are edge runners or are marginalized in some way, shape, or form. They are collectively stronger than you could ever comprehend. And calling them like subhuman garbage or whatever just it just rolls off our backs for the most part. It, there's literally nothing you can say that would really bother us because we know at the end of the day, it's you that has the issue. <laughs> you know what? I'll use it. Oh, Cassie, they can't. None of them can keep the mask on anymore. Well, we didn't ban him. So, I mean, if he's not here, he left. But we didn't ban him. And that's how you do it. Those fuckers really do just want to be banned. They they want their victim card. And they don't have one. And they want it. Yeah, oh yeah. If you've got if you're running a um if if you're running a bingo card, uh, uh tech guy, it takes a minute for that to refresh sometimes. Um if you're uh if you're running a big bingo card, Feel free to mark off ch- uh, Cowardly Chud if you've got it on your card because not everybody has the same card. Oh 
He's not going to say shit. Just wants to try to troll and now is silent. What about Thirsty Chud? That wasn't a Thirsty Chud. No, Aka. That, that was not a Thirsty Chud. <laughs> I'm being persecuted for being a bigot. I'm the real victim here. <laughs> I mean, he probably is, Akka. That usually underlies most of that shit. Is that, you know, they're... He came in, he saw a pretty dude with some nail polish, and, you know, it made his PP feel weird, and they, he lashes out really quickly. Oh, yeah, he wasn't even good at it. Like, he was just a shit troll. Right? Like, occasionally, occasionally we get good ones. <laughs> you could set up a decent guano mining facility at the level of chicken shit that this guy's dropping right now. Um, bet, bet, we have four more chuds on the way. He's claiming we bad faith screamed at him and wanted the band to back up his story. It happens. <laughs> yeah, Fidel, yeah, what a concept, right? Um, <laughs> fucking Sven. Hey there, Sven. Thanks for the follow or refollow or however the fuck that worked. Um, oh, geez, non binaries all alone in a hotel. Jesus, non binary. Fucking A, if you're in here right now, yeah, like just like as a, as a, like a worker all alone. Jeez, with 500 guests. Yo, what's going on? Yeah. Um, hey, do what you got to do, Sven. Do what you got to do. Um, I'm only a thirsty chud when I want to drink my bourbon. Um, Krusty, you are not a chud. You, you may have some centrist and some right-leaning, right, right leaning, especially by our definition, positions and viewpoints. You are not a chud, my man. You are far, far from it. Oh, and Sven... You should have been here for the beginning of the stream. Like, the, fir the whole, like, the first three quarters of this stream were straight up fucking horny town man you would have you would have you would have gotten wound up by it let's just put it that way <clears throat> um it sounds like a labor abuse sub kind yeah it does doesn't it um what a doc is i Should cut normal. Oh, wait, I meant weird. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, I'm usually asleep when you're streaming. Hey, uh, and choking on uh, choking on ashes. Uh, you know, yeah. It is for some people. I I have two stream times. There's 5:30 p.m. Pacific and 11:30 p.m. Pacific. Um. Yo. Oh, Sven, it was a thing. It was a thing, son. Like it was a thing. Um. Ah, uh, the paradox, uh, paradox of tolerance. I don't even have that problem. They love to throw that problem at you, but it bounces right off me. Tolerance is a passive position, and it means nothing. You, for instance, I don't tolerate you. If I told you that I tolerate you, it's not like you would feel great about it. I actively support you, bigots and fash, uh, landlords and uh, tricons at all. I actively oppose them. <laughs> Fair enough. Adam, that's actually an interesting position to take. Like, I don't tolerate anything. I either actively oppose... George Carlin had an old bit... Adam about how uh oh tech take care of yourself enjoy um probably not but take care of yourself man and I'm on five days a week as I take a night off so stop by any other time tech um and you're on the discord server now so um um uh, George Carlin had an old uh, old uh, bit about how um he doesn't like or dislike something he either loves it or has a major fucking hatred and he found that it was just an easier way to sort his life. 
rather than you just get rid of all of the gray area for things and just be like, yeah, I either love stuff or I fucking hate it. It's pretty easy to sort that stuff. Um, take care, man. I downloaded this like a thousand times. Um, I choose, I choose who I, um, who I tolerate at random mostly. Um, Chud methodology. Drop hot take as if it's axiomatic. Provide no evidence to support claim when challenged and lash out with ad hominem at people who heckle them for, over be, uh, for being unable to substantiate their shitty reality. Hey, biddies. Thank you for the biddies. Um, yes. Yes, Gaffodil. Major f psychotic fucking hatreds. I think that's close. Yeah. Um, if not spot on. And yeah, check it on. Thank you for those biddies. Um, come on, here we go. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm actually hungry again. I didn't. I ate not that long ago, or was it that long ago? Mm. Um. God damn it. I didn't mean to click that. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's gone now. He's gone. Um. <laughs> Jesus, Sven. <laughs> oh, Sven. Um. Oh, we got another one. Um, no. Um, that Indigo Child shit was not a thing, really, when my mother was raising me. Um, so. Yeah, no. I'm 38. Of course. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I definitely look 45. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gaffodil, Indigo Child is this like crazy hippie shit that um, a group, uh, um, basically a, a bunch of fucking like is spiritualist types um, thought, uh, basically, they advocate that uh, certain children were born, uh, were reborn through the cycle of rebirth with knowledge or information of previous iterations and spiritual information from the great beyond, giving them, like, psychic powers and insights that they, no child could possibly have. Yeah. Oops, that's the exact window I wanted. Um, it looks like Warthog has been timed out multiple times for, like, many, many seconds. Like, even, like, get rid of him for the entire day timeouts. Yeah. And likes to talk about IQ. Um, definitely has an issue with trans people. Oh, this is a great take. Gays become ideal women in the workforce. Oh, also a COVID uh, conspiracy theorist about how the Chinese manufactured it and infected the world, that sort of thing. Came from a Wuhan lab. Um, uh, 
also likes to play both sides of the aisles. So if he says something about Trump or Biden, he um, he he likes to play both sides of the aisle. So don't get baited by that either. Um. Uh, what did? Uh, oh God, what did? War thog. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, trans was the 60s and 70s version of trans you dipshit. Um, oh, like, see, he knows. He knows. He's a troll. He's a troll. 100%. I do not believe for a second Warthog has actual ideologies or beliefs. And if they are, they'll never will never get exposed to them. If, if if they actually have them, if they actually hold beliefs near and dear to their heart, we'll we'll never get close. They're a troll. They'll say that you're a Trump supporter and a Biden supporter in the same fucking like string of comments. He's done it. I've seen it in his chat log about how, oh, this is you're a fucking Trump supporter, aren't you? Oh, you're a Biden supporter, aren't you? Like he he's playing both sides of the aisle. He's a troll. Just know that. Oh, yeah, look who came back. Aww. Welcome back, Transatlantic. You missed us, didn't you? You you just wanted to look at my pretty gay face. Do I make your PP uh, do I make your PP feel weird? Mm. Oh. Poor boo boo. Tink tink. <laughs> Did you get some rough trade yet? <laughs> oh. Axel, if that works. I mean, I swear to God, Axel, if that works. I mean, I'll be shocked. Um. Oh, fuck, Story Girl, all the minarchists are all fucking capitalists. It's another co-opted term. They're libertarian. Libertarian. Yeah. They're, it's just another co-opted term. They have absolutely no understanding of the theory that underpins actual minarchism. All they are is big government bad. Yeah, Exel, I, I like if that fucking works, Exel, I'd be shocked. I mean, Adia, not in, like, not on paper, no. On paper, no. In practice, usually. Oh, it is choking. It is. True minarchists are huge government. Literally the opposite of what that means. It literally, the, the Night Watchman state, it's why he said Night Watchman earlier. It's, it's generally referred to as the Night Watchman state, but it's uh, reducing a government to the minimum scope that a government could possibly exist under, uh, exist within to be still classified in, uh, like, and definitionally be called a government. So, yes, that's definitely a huge government. See? Warthog's just a troll, y'all. Don't take him seriously. He doesn't believe anything. He doesn't really know much of anything either. He knows a few terms that he throws out, um, but he can't discuss any of this theory at length. Uh, if you poke and prod, he'll just ignore your answers, uh, your questions, because he can't answer them. 
He's, you know, but for the most part, yeah, it's just, he's just a troll who likes to play both sides and get a rile out of people. That's all. I don't think so, Biking Cat. <laughs> oh, Cupcake. Um, thank you, Cupcake. Thank you for putting me onto the latest Trump supporter conspiracy. That was brilliant. For those of you who don't know, and credit where credit's due, Cupcake, uh, Cupcake posted this into the Discord server so we could all be made aware. The latest Trump QAnon fucking Trump is still the president dumbass conspiracy is that Biden was in fact repelled that's the term repelled when he attempted to enter the white house by the military on in january and has been ruling as an ad hoc sub, uh, subversive leader from the 80 percent scale white house that tyler perry had built on his estate in georgia for the filming of a tv show and that all iterations and instances of biden at the white house that you have seen in me in popular media have actually been shot on Tyler Perry's estate. Yeah. That's a thing. It's a thing. Thank you, Big Bear. <laughs> yes, Finn. Fair enough. I've been fucking. I'm an Enrico Perryness now. It's creative. Not gonna lie. See, Gaffodil. That's that's my opinion. My opinion is that like the conspiracy theorists are always hilarious to listen to because the level of like creativity that goes into some of these conspiracy theories is truly staggering. I enjoy them. I enjoy hearing them. It's like, oh wow. So Biden is ruling from Tyler Perry's estate in which he built a 80% scale replica of the White House. All right, that's a new one. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think it's like a creative writing exercise. They're amazing. Oh, all right, so let's go to Rational Wiki. We'll, we'll, we'll address this idiot one last time. Proudly is just dumb. He doesn't understand minarchists. The goal of minarchists is to limit second party negative externalities. See, that's adorable that after I criticize you for not knowing anything, you try to use a multisyllabic set of terminology, uh, terms that don't apply into this. In today's world with massive businesses and abuses of power, the government would be huge. <clears throat> Even rational wiki. Minarchism is a political philosophy advocating the reduction of government functions to a minimum scope, providing people only with bare-bones services, such as law and security. It is considered a form of libertarianism, and since it finds some useful role for the state, it is thus incompatible with anarcho-capitalism, unless, of course, you consider the Friedman-esque voucher a bridge between ANCAPs and minarchism, another major form of libertarianisms. And uh, Ayn Rand's views could be described as minarchism. Advocating, uh, advocating for a, uh, a state in which they are not responsible for education, healthcare, employment, transportation, nor neither do they manage any natural resources of its territory. All of these things should be held uh, held privately. Um, it is never susceptible to any fears. Blah 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 blah. It is of course different from anarchy, since the latter term. Yeah. Do we need to get into this shit? Um, yeah, and links, you can see our auto prompt that happens. Oh, Viva, it's super cringe. It's super fucking cringe. It's, you know, it, it's, I want my cake. I want to have my cake and eat it to territory. It's excessively poorly thought out. <laughs> 
Like, I, I honestly... I, I love I love the rational wiki discussion portion criticism. Even the Austrian ec economists do not advocate for this. And as and as for his his third party externalities, next comes externalities which are detriments or benefits for, uh, that the producer or the goods of services doesn't have to deal with. An example of this is pollution. If a firm can lower their average costs in order to ma uh, make significantly more profit by dumping their waste in the local river, so long as the uh, owners don't drink from said river, it will probably do to maximize its profits. This generally harms the local population. Former the company gains from the, uh, properly disposing its waste. So overall, it's a net loss for society. Third party effects arising from production of this good are greater than. Uh, that of the private benefits incurred so everyone is poorer than they had been uh than they would have been otherwise um this is this is literally one of the criticisms of minarchists like it's just it's just he doesn't know what he's talking about y'all i'm telling you don't pay him any attention he's just a troll he likes to say things to rile people up and get a res get a get an emotional response out of them don't take him seriously <laughs> Gemma. Um, is it, uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Marcus, for sure. <laughs> Gemma, yeah, fucking meme the shit out of it. Why not? It is a, it's, it is, it's essentially a meme anyway. It's Ayn Rand for fuck's sake. It's, it, it's, it, it literally, I, Randian objectivism could be classed under minarchism. All right. Or vice versa. It doesn't really matter for all intents and purposes. So. You know, why not meme on it? Hey, and there it is talking about the fucking uh, IQ. Yep. Uh, and you're just a limp dick, special card holding white male homo that uses his IQ to hide the fact that he doesn't care that a large percentage of Americans are dying each year because we refuse to regulate industries, says the minarchist. They literally advocate for not, um, not regulating healthcare, which is an industry that would not be regulated under your little fucking, we refuse to regulate industries. Again, you're advocating for minarchism, which specifically iterates out healthcare is not be as being one of the industries that shouldn't be regulated. Good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, like I said, don't take him seriously. Um, let me mark that as right up there, though. Hmm. Fun fact. Gay marriage has now been around, around longer in this country than the Confederacy. And according to a study by the Williams Institute at the UCLA School of Law, there are approximately 9 million out known uh, LGBT Americans. In 1860, the Confederate states had a total non-enslaved population of 5.6 million. So... By any reasonable metric, the rainbow flag more authentically represents the American experience than the Confederate one at this point, population-wise and uh, chronologically. Uh, Angie? No. 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 They're fucking terrible people, Angie. They're terrible people. 
and probably radical the twitch channel where trolls go to die oh gemma i actually kind of like that as a tagline i may steal that gemma can i can i can i take that gemma i i i'm i'm i i i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna steal that Um, can we erect some gay statues? Ooh, that'd be fun. Um, the South shall fall again. Uh, where the hell are all the statues the gay rights activists then? Hmm, curious. Yeah. Actually, there's, there are a couple, but mm. suck our collective dicks. <laughs> it's all yours. You've earned it. Thank you, Gemma. Um. I played the CSA in a game and I flipped it to socialist and the US had the slaves. Sadly, I kept getting attacked and lost my colonies in Palestine and such. Fair enough. What game, Sven? Um, and then just... Krusty? That's for you, Krusty. <laughs> the Romans done that already. <laughs> um divine i want a statue of divine oh jesus can we get a statue of john waters too already if we're gonna if we're gonna erect a statue of divine can we get a statue of john waters i mean you know maybe the pair of them that'd be nice victoria 2 through Victor victoria 3 is coming out soon hmm, interesting is there one in a baltimore already i, I mean maybe i don't know yeah There is there is a there is a, a there's a monument in the works uh, in Baltimore t for Divine, yeah. Which I mean. Good on you, Baltimore. Good on you. Respect. Monument to filth politics. Um, oh, speaking of filth politics, uh, <laughs> Facebook is, uh, is like rolled out a feature set is letting, um, Religious groups charge users $10 a month for exclusive content, like messages from their church's bishop. So, like good old-fashioned Catholic and um, seed, uh, uh, seed faith shit, Facebook is now facilitating uh, via a subscription model of information uh, paywalling uh, for these groups. So churches can now charge like a subscription fee to be a member of their church group on Facebook. Jesus be cool with that, right? Sounds like something Jesus would do. Uh, and so I, I see, like, I, or at least I saw, um, multisyllabic is many, whereas polysyllabic is consisting of more than two, preferentially more than three syllables. Um, they are treated as synonyms outright. Um, but yeah. It fucking dove sellers. a boy. Yep. Fucking dove sellers. It's 
Sven. Syllabic. <laughs> I didn't help you, did I? <laughs> I just clarified. Um, syllable. You remember back in school, Sven, when they had you count syllables? By like tapping or something, like clapping? Farmer. All right. There's two syllables, right? There you go. Um, so syllabic is just a, a form of saying syllable. Yeah, there you go, Sven. All right. So multisyllabic. Psychological. Multisyllabic. And, and polysyllabic as well. But there is a slight distinction to be made, but they are treated as synonyms. <laughs> Fair enough, Sven. Mer good old, a good old American educational system, right? Ah, no worries, man. We all need a refresher from time to time. Um... Wait, what did what did you say, Akka, that you're like, that's going to be in my chat log? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I see, Akka. <laughs> I see what you said. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's going to be in my chat log. Uh, I'm going to smoke some weed since we're not getting stupid. Um, I love that uh, Mitre fucking just busts it out. Um, so everybody, like, I don't think, I don't think you mind me saying this, Mitre. And if, if I cross any lines, let me know. Um, so everybody knows Mitre is like a librarian and a teacher, but a librarian. Does anybody know the qualifications a librarian has to have? to be a librarian they're usually the best educated person in the school <laughs> it's just like legitimately they are some oftentimes the best educated person in the goddamn school librarians are they swing mad big dick when it comes to that sort of thing mitra is a librarian y'all <laughs> like for real Uh, yeah, it's, Gemma, it's usually, it's almost always a master's these days. In the U.S., it's a required master's. Yeah. Yes, Mitre's a damn smart pervert. Yeah, yeah, it's, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking, <laughs> it's always interesting to see Mitre, like, change gears all of a sudden and go from, like, Mitre into... I won't, I won't dox you, but I do think of you as two people, Mitre, and I, I assign, like, that other stuff to your just given name, as, like, to see you just shift gears really quickly, and, like, all right, motherfucker, you want to do this? Let's do this. <laughs> uh, the, the thing... The thing that librarians are best at is they know how to research. They know how to source things. And that's like three quarters of the game. Knowing where to find and how to find and process information is a librarian's like core knowledge set. And in the information age, being able to source information and process it correctly Dude, that's like three quarters of the game right there. Librarians are way ahead of us. Like the, most of us in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's just a shame for the judge. All the really clever folk are lefties. Um, <laughs> oh...
librarians are also kinky, at least the ladies I don't know about the guys. I've never, oh, sorry, shooting pain, shooting pain, shooting pain. Whew. All right, um, I've never been with a librarian. Hey, Mitre, you down for like some buy swing and shit? Like you wanna, I just, I need to chalk one up. I've never been with a librarian. You're the only male librarian I know, Mitre. Like you, you down for a tryst on the beach? Um. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mitre, stop. <laughs> oh, Mitre. Um. I ran to the store and bought Gas Monkey Herb, uh, 34.25 THC and ice cream uh, cake vape, 78% THC. What are you smoking these days? Um, I have, I don't, um, chocolate banana cookies or some bullshit name like that. I don't remember what it is, but it's a one-to-one. -one, so it's like, I, I think like 43% THC, 47% CBD or something like that. Um, so I, I smoke one-to-ones usually. That's usually where, um, uh, where I hang out, um, for what I smoke. I like a nice CBD THC balance. Yeah. Since the CBD competes for a lot of the same receptor sites, um, it tends to minimize, uh, some of the anxiousness that can come along with that. And I tend to lean, uh, indica, indica heavy. Um, indica for me doesn't put me in the cha uh, couch. Hey, world cat. Thank you for the follow. Um, it doesn't put me in the couch like it does a lot of people. Uh, it's been my go-to strain for years and years and years and years and years. Um, <laughs> the library definitely didn't know how to say stuff. Um, pain. Does this fan need to treat this fan? Um, yeah, it's fan. If, if, okay, if you want to, if you want to uh, massage my legs, fan. That's that's where it was going on. Um, uh, yes, yeah, this fan. I met the guy. Um, did somebody just get pulled? I think somebody got pulled. No. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't help my pain at all, Cassie. It doesn't help my pain at all. Not in one way, shape, or form. Um. Yeah, <laughs> links. Yeah, uh, both mine are indica as well. Yeah, uh, crit, yeah, I, 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 I prefer indicas. I prefer indicas over sativas. I've already got one of those brains. Right, I don't need something to fucking add some extra lube to the gears and let make it go faster and shit. Um, yeah, that's that's not a thing I need. I just like as much THC as possible, probably because I'm 20. Yeah, Gaffodil. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a young person's game. Um, oh, uh, jazz cat is world cat. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thanks for hanging out. Um, enjoy. Uh, what are you playing? Uh, if you have a moment away from the keyboard or whatever, uh, jazz cat, like wh what you, what you playing? Um, Let's see. Uh, the reason I went opioids instead of THC for treatment is THC actually increased my pain level in the past. Yes, Cassidy. Um, one of my friends calls it the great enhancer. Um, and so like it, it can, it can enhance food. It can enhance a movie. It can enhance, um, you know, it, it, you can enhance all of the senses up to and including pain receptors. It really can make it worse. And yeah, I've definitely had periods of time where my neuropathy was so bad that I just had to like, there is no weed in my life whatsoever. Like I need a break. Like I've taken months breaks before because can't do it. Can't do it. It just makes everything worse. Um, so when my neuropathy is sort of at a minimum for me, I can, I can smoke. Yeah. Chris, oh yeah. Chris, for sure. The older you get, the, it seems, it seems the older you get, the more you lean towards Indica. Oof, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, I don't care about that. See, that's the thing, Warthog. Like, you, you place value on that. I don't... I have family members who breed. That's... The family... The family genetic lineage is not going to die. The only thing that actually dies is my iteration of it. Right? Like, the familial... 
genetic lineage keeps going. Like I haven't stopped 5 million years. I've just stopped my little branch. Like literally there's a little bud offshoot on the tree. And I'm just like, yeah, that bud's not going to flower. No big deal. The branch is still going. The tree is still growing. So I've, I've ceased nothing. Um, and weird, weird, but fun fact. Um, my, my mom and my biological, uh, father, uh, my mom and my dad, all right. They introduced their younger, uh, his, my father introduced his younger brother to my mom's younger sister. So my mother and father dated and got married and then their younger brother and sister fell in love and got married as well. These two family trees were intertwined and rebranching out no matter what. So even if my mom and dad were gay and didn't have me, the family tree still continues the way it was going to. Done. Like, you have literally no argument, Warthog, with as far as Meek is concerned. You, you stand on no ground. So, all that ends is this particular little bud. Not the tree. It continues on. And why you're obsessed with continuing my genetic lineage makes me feel like you just want me to breed you or something. Like it's a little weird, man. It's a little weird. Is <laughs> uh, <laughs> jazz cat. I mean, I'm not a top, so I, I have never, and I mean, I can't say will never, but I have never done that. I've been on the receiving end quite a few times, um, but yeah, I, I that, that's you know, but you do you, boo. If Warthog wants to bend over and take a that's he can do it. Glazy, no. No. I know it's crazy, right? Like a lot of people have like even within the like the game, like a lot of people, like never. No. Oh, we'd we'd fuck this place up, War Dog. Trust me. If I were if I were like heteronormative, just change everything. Just change that, right? If I if I were a breeder, watch out. Oh yeah, I know how to do stuff. Like I I know how to do stuff. My kids, would, I'd have my kids off grid. Even my kids could do some things. Yeah. Yeah. Because why would I? Oh, God, it's so much work, and it's so much bullshit, and it's just stuff I don't want to... See, you know what I did on Sunday? See, this is the thing. Like, if you've got kids, you know what you did on a Sunday? You probably took them to, like, fucking church or something, and you got them ice cream and shit like that, right? You know what I did on Sunday? I went and got fucked, right? Like, I had a good old time for multiple hours. Just levels and depths of depravity that would make you blush, Warthog. Probably make you run from the room screaming with fucking, oh my god, my eyes! Right? I had a good old time. Alright? That's, that's, that's what I get to do. Because I don't have some fucking screaming little crotch goblin running around that I'm legally and morally and ethically responsible for. I'm good. If I had a dick, I'd be sticking it in things. Um, yeah.
yeah, Elrond. It's a solid way to look at it too. Like our entire human race is just the entire human species is our family tree. Stop fucking. You're a branch. You're not even a tree. That's a good point, Elrond. Warthog, you're not even a tree. You're a fucking like a, a limb, a branch. Like your entire genetic lineage as your family, as you like to put it, like your ancestors is a fucking branch on a tree. You're not even the tree. Right? Like, so you're a twig, like, you know, fucking a weed. Crusty is a fucking weed. Um, you're nothing. You're not separate. You're just one small fractal iteration of something that is far grander than you. So stop trying to take credit for shit. My genetic lineage, my kids. It's all ego shit. It's all ego shit. It's all ego shit. Get over yourself, man. Get over yourself. It's ego shit, man. Fucking my kids and my genetic lineage. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. That's definitely a thing I lack is respect for life. Yeah. And by breeding more little fucking crotch goblins into this world, you have destroyed the ecosystem even more. The most destructive thing a human being can do in this point in our history's uh, pr uh, pr uh, uh, process development is bring another human being into this world. Especially a first world, a developed nation child. They are going to do more ecological damage than anybody else. You have basically, you've basically genocided multiple species just by having a kid. Good job. Yeah, you definitely respect life, man. For sure. Do you have custody of your kids? <laughs> uh, Sven. Oh, Krusty, what did you do? Um... Remember that when you drop your load into the butthole. Warthog. Warthog. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh yeah. Krusty, yeah, four kids branched out to eight grandkids. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Karina in all caps. Bottom. Never done that. I've never done that. I've never done that. <laughs> so, you know, ah, man, you're amazing. Uh, this is why queer sex ed for straight should be compulsory, says Jim. <laughs> oh, Chama. Oh, they do need it. Oh, they do need it. They need... First, they need, a, like, a healthy dose of their own sex ed. But, you know, a comprehensive sex, sexual education for all uh, all parties. That should be just all-inclusive. Oh, World Cat. Warthog, Warthog is obsessed with the fact that I'm gay. I, I honestly think he's jealous. I think he's jealous. I think he's got a fucking, like, a little brood of children and a wife, and he looks at somebody like me who has a relatively carefree life um, and just gets jealous. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's fucking weird. He comes in and starts yelling about shit he doesn't, know, he doesn't understand anything about. Hey, fucking, then he gets on to some, like, I'm ending the 5 million year genetic lineage because I fucking drop loads in buttholes and shit like that, not even understanding what a bottom is. But, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's weird, right? It's weird. It's weird. It <laughs> wither. <laughs> Remember the genocide of mankind when you spew your load in someone's ass, queer. <laughs> uh. She doesn't know you're the void the babies are saying. 
carp carpe. Oh man. <clears throat> Uh, World Cat. So here's here's what we advocate for on my channel. All right, this is a thing that, like, w if this ever catches on, no, it came from me. I want credit for this shit. I want credit for this shit. I want to condense the entire LGBTQIA plus LMNOP crew. I want to compress all of us down to queer. All right. So traditionally, if you're if you're pan, you wouldn't be gay. Gay is tradition traditionally the masculine masculine homosexual pairing um but i am an advocate for compressing all of us into queer and just ditching all of the initialisms um and then we just take queer we take the letter q for our own and like it's just the q agenda that sort of thing and we get to doubly fuck the q and on idiots we get to steal something else from the world we already took a fucking rainbow from them and we took the word for happy i would love to see us take the letter q and make it the gay letter so queer is yours if you choose if you if you want it pan non-binary it doesn't matter you all fit under the umbrella of queer certain people within the lgbtq uh, community um over a certain age have mixed feelings about the word queer because it once was a slur but for a long time it was sort of mixed bag territory um and a lot of things that weren't gay or you know necessarily like you know were queer they strange weird awkward that's sort of what queer meant so i advocate for just using the word queer um, technically you wouldn't fall under gay. Q unanimous. Um, <laughs> I'm cool with that. That's what they called me in high school. Interesting. Carpe. Um, were you East coast carpe? Like that's, that's, that's a very traditional East coast thing for that sort of era, that sort of generation. Um, the West coast didn't use it as much from what I understand. Um, but Yeah. The mighty Q. Gay biddies for toppling society and ruining legacies. Thank you, Aka Shoga. Thank you, Aka. Thank you for the biddies. Um, um, I highly doubt that, Warthog. I highly doubt that. That your, your entire family uses less resources than me. I just doubt that a lot. Just your drive... Do you, do you drive to like school do you do the school run just your school run alone would fucking demolish yeah um this is the peak of toxic masculinity he's wrapped up in the male position of sex he's incapable of conceiving the bedroom out of the heteronormative view men don't get cum in their butts <laughs> uh uh nonsense i'm a cishet but from my understanding i'm pretty still uh still pretty weird you are nonsense and you're you're weird in all the right ways nonsense um oh jesus sven fucking sven going in hard if you're jealous that you didn't date that it, warthog if you're jealous that you didn't date that guy back in secondary school or didn't kiss your friend when you were experimenting or whatever, doesn't mean you need to hold a grudge on others. While they may be attacking you, they mean nothing to you. Go hang out in secrecy if needed. Go hang out with that special friend or go do whatever you want. We're nothing to you. You do you, boo. <laughs> Sven. <laughs> oh, Sven. Uh, went to high school in Missouri from halfway through freshman year until graduating. All right. Well, that sort of feels right, uh, Carpe. You're a little, you're, are you a little older than me? Or are we the, basically the same age, Carpe? Um, Eighty-five to eighty-eight. Oh shit! You're older than me, Carpe. You're like, you're a clip older than me. Yeah, you're, you're way older. Um, of course you homes, of course, Warthog homeschools. Holy shit. Warthog homeschools, y'all. Warthog homeschools. Holy shit. I, I don't fucking, fuck it. Whatever the fuck it, whatever you need to do to, oh man. Dear sweet Jesus.
Marcus, thank you for the biddies. I want this fucker to know once the stream is over, I'm going to watch so much gay porn and there's nothing he can do to stop me. Um, that's close enough. Um, let's see. There you go. Close enough. Um, let's see. Oh, I have to, I have to guess. I mean, it's not very high. I don't do much driving. Um, okay, so I have a high mileage vehicle, uh, high miles per uh, gallon vehicle too, but I'll average it. For city and highway. <laughs> Um, you know what? I'll be generous. I'll go over on that one. Um, next. Oh, we have some of the bet. We have some of the cleanest fucking, uh, we have some of the greenest, uh, sources for our, our electricity out here. We have fucking, um, hydroelectric and solar up the ass. Um, <coughs> we're, we're one of the greenest fucking electricity sources in this fucking country at this point. Um, I think something that close to that, um, that, that <coughs> um okay i don't eat any grains or like or baked goods that's not my thing i eat no dairy whatsoever i don't do drinks i don't do that i yeah that's probably a little bit above average on that one next oh um warthog I'm doing the carbon footprint calculator, Warthog. I want a screenshot of your results. Now, by the way. And <clears throat> since you're the one who brought this to my attention, I'm assuming you already did it. I want your results now. Because before I share mine, <clears throat> I wanna see I wanna see your results. Um, let's see. Oh, way less than that. Uh, Sven, my diet is highly cultivated. Um, I, I, I have people for everything. It's even a joke. Everybody, if you're running a bingo card, feel free to mark off. Kai has a guy for that. I have a guy for everything. I, I, over the years I have sourced things. Yeah. So where you may buy something from that place, I have the guy who hunts that or produces that um do you have a guy for chairs um i actually used to yeah i actually used to have um uh, one of my clients is uh, was a um a woodworking company um a manu like a woodworking manufacturing company um, that they they made chairs and like office furniture and that sort of stuff. Oh no, homeschooling. Yeah. Um, all right, so catch up. I wonder if CIL is his kid. Oh God, help us. Um, No, no, Warthog. I want to see your results. I want the link. I want to see your fucking results. I want a screenshot. Not you, seven tons CO2 per year for the whole family and I went up. Bullshit. I want to see it. Because you did this already, right? Let me see it. Oh, 
Was that? Why did they default add those? Holy shit. That's kind of stupid as fuck, actually. This calculator's not well designed. Um, okay, so I don't use any of that. Well, now I know you're full of shit because I'm trying to replicate your results. I'm trying to replicate your results, Warthog. <clears throat> to get to nine tons of CO2 emitted per year, here's what you have to do, folks. You have to have literally no vehicle, no travel, no public transportation, no whatsoever. Your food, you have to reduce to zero on meat, fish, eggs, grains, baked goods, dairies, fruits, vegetables, snacks, drinks. Your shopping has to go to zero goods and zero services. And then your footprint is nine to, uh, it, And then only then if your home has, oh, the 100% green energy, 100%. And you, uh, oh, you only use about $450 worth of natural gas per year. And you live in an average 1,500 square foot size facility. Then your footprint is nine tons of CO2 per year. So with no food whatsoever, no travel whatsoever, and 100% green energy, you can get to nine tons of CO2 per year. Warthog has seven, he says, with children. You're full of shit. <clears throat> oh, your whole family is 32 tons. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It's funny how that comes up now. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have 1950 there. Let's see. I'm average on that. Um, my household is looking to be about about 22 tons per year for my entire house. It helps to live in a state that has hydroelectric and solar up the ass. Do you know how many years it's been since I've taken a flight? You think I take two to three flights a year? I love how, I love how you know my life better than I do, Warthog. That's fucking brilliant. It's really good. It's really good. Solar, is that what President Trump was hiding in his ass? Yeah, something like that. You do, you do realize that the all of the world's entertainment comes to me, right, Warthog? Regular fucking, yeah, exactly, Carpe. Just a regular fucking clairvoyant up in this bitch. Oh, and there's the pivot. Everyone, everyone, if you've got pivot on your bingo card, Warthog just ticked the pivot for you. There you go. Oh, chair kicker. I could introduce you to a few. <laughs> Gay people on average have more money. It's true. We, we have more money than the rest of you. It's just a thing that ha it's just, just on average, gay dudes have more money. Yeah. Um, 
Goalpost move recorded, yes. Yeah, well, that's your... Hey, hey, Warthog, you're free to make whatever lifestyle choices you want to make, boo. I would never step in and, and, and you know, it, dictate what kind of lifestyle you choose for yourself. But here's the thing. Could you not... Could you... Could you not push your lifestyle in all of our faces? We're really, we really were uncomfortable with, with the whole, like, you know, it's, it's just, we find it, we find it distasteful. Like if you could just keep it yourself and not make it such a large part of your personality, that'd be great. Chair, there you go. I got nothing against straight dudes. Tons of tons of my friends are straight dudes, but keep it in the bedroom. I actually, all of my best friends, like in in real life, have always been straight dudes. I, I exclusively hang out with straight dudes. That is a thing. I, I find it much easier as a as a gay man to just hang out with straight dudes. They're so much simpler. They're so much simpler. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not shocked at all, Warthog. No gay dude would want to be around you. You'd be a nightmare to be around. Honestly, who the fuck would want to be, hang out with you? You're an insufferable cunt. Like, who the fuck, who would actually want to hang around you? You're terrible. Of course you like having kids. They're a captive audience. They can't get rid of you. Of course, when they turn 18, maybe even 16, if they can get emancipated, they are going to flee. If you haven't brainwashed them successfully enough using that homeschool bullshit. You know, who knows, though? <laughs> there you go, folks. There you go. Future of America right there. <laughs> Where did the Catholic priest do the bad touch on you? Uh... What about straight pride month though? Thank you for the biddies, Aka. Thank you for the biddies. But what about straight pride? Oh God, there's nothing sadder than a straight pride parade when three just pathetic dudes in khakis show up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this troll has any kids. I don't think they could inseminate a grapefruit. <laughs> Chair kicker. That's solid imagery. That's solid imagery. Three dudes in camo cargo shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I left off the camo part. You're right. Carpe. I stand corrected. <clears throat> Yeah, Karina, honestly, socialization um, socialization is completely, if, if this is the proper use of this word, I'm sorry, but um, childhood uh, psychological development and socialization is, uh, such a, uh, and the skills and t uh, t things that they, uh, they, uh, they develop through those processes, such as empathetic responses to their fellow human beings, are actually retarded by homeschooling. That's, yeah. <clears throat> You, you, you're, you're breaking your kids, man. You're breaking your fucking kids. Hey, um, here, <clears throat> here you go. Just a reminder, most pedophiles are, uh, most pedophiles and child molesters are actually heterosexual and cisgendered. Womp womp.
Warthog, you got bodied, man. Just admit it. <clears throat> you got bodied. You're not good at trolling. You're not good at facts. You're not good at parenting. You're not good at sex. Just admit you got bodied, man. You got bodied by some fucking gay dude in a skirt that likes dick up his ass. It's okay, man. It happens to the best of us. But it's time to, like, hang it up. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. So, let's see. Um, let's do some police rage. Um, <clears throat> did y'all see the Illinois uh, canine fucking uh, cop um, that had to be tased? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, let's do some police rage. So, cops, bunch of pigs pull over a fucking car. And they start riling the car because, you know, meets a description, that sort of thing. They're looking for an incident. Um, and they start demanding papers from everybody in the car because you have to identify yourself. They drag this dude out of the car. It was a truck. They drag this dude out of the back seat. They put him on the fucking side and the dog attacks his fucking leg. All right. Latches onto his leg and uh, continues biting it for nine minutes. All right, latches on for nine goddamn minutes. The dog did not respond to any commands, did not respond to its handler whatsoever, as far as release goes. They ended up having to tase the dog to get it off the dude's leg. They then said that he was obstructing justice by resisting arrest and this is why they attempted to detain him guess what no charges filed No. Um, yeah, the dog responds to the the handler's um, even subconscious reactions. Dogs are super intuitive that way. They respond to their handler. Um, unless they're in full-blown attack mode. Yeah, uh, World Cat, um, I would probably charge the handler and the department. I, I would I would bring in an outside investigator for the department because clearly their um, their canine unit needs reformation like writ large. Um, but then the handler themselves should probably be investigated at the very least for sure. <clears throat> Uh, we'll see. We'll see. They may have. They may end up having qualified immunity on this one too. So we'll see what the fucking lawsuits sorts out. Um, and speaking of lawsuits, you remember Jamal Sutherland, the guy who um, uh, who died in jail earlier this year when they were forcibly removing him from his cell. Um, they they pepper sprayed him. They tased him multiple times. Um, when he appeared to resist leaving the cell for a bail hearing and they like, they tased him like six to eight fucking times. They pepper sprayed him multiple times. Um, well, the family is, uh, going to see a $10 million settlement out of that one. So that's $10 million out of the taxpayers coffers that is going to go to a family that would probably much rather have their family member back rather than the $10 million. Um, you know, par for the course. But I figured while we're on it. Um, and while we're doing this one, while we're doing the rounds of, hey, let's be angry at cops. Um, Inyo County Sheriff's roll up on a dude, shoot his dog, and beat him senseless to the point of having to be um, checked into the ICU. Okay? Critical condition. Murder his fucking dog. Why? He matched a description. He wasn't the guy they were looking for.
I, I could show you the video. We have the video of the dog murder slash brutal beating. Got it, the entire thing on camera because they did it in a Chevron parking lot. Match the description. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cassie, yeah, the cops kill 10,000 plus dogs uh, every, uh, every year. Yeah, I forget what the current average they're up to. Um, hey, Abby. Uh, 25 dogs per day. The cops kill 25 dogs per day in this country. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to report a man driving a, a car... A suspect is hatless. Repeat hatless. Yeah. Oh, don't really know. I'm sorry, but yeah, probably best. We're gonna we're gonna do a little tirade here. Um, take care of yourself though. Don't really know. Um, I legit had that in undergrad. I was at dinner and my dorm was out looking. Uh, at, at, I was at dinner and my dorm was out looking for me because there was a description of a short black dude in a leather jacket and they were worried I'd be killed. Oh, Jesus. Um, oh, yeah, Rev. Like, there's that infamous one that's still hilarious. Um, the California fucking cop rolls up on the house and tries to shoot the dog and shoots himself in his foot. Still one of the funniest goddamn videos ever. Happened a few years back. Um... Yeah, he, he literally... Hey, good night, Akashoga. Take care of yourself. Yeah, he tries to shoot a fucking dog that's, like, you know, hopping around happy and shit. And it, like, you know, he fucking goes to shoot it and shoots himself in the foot. It's like, yep. Yeah, that, that, that. Can we get more of that? Because that's fucking brilliant. Uh, Elrond, I'll try and find it for you. I don't have the video. I just have the uh, uh, the after image right now. Let me try and find the video. Yeah, all I have is the fucking image of him bandaging, like ad hoc bandaging his foot. <laughs> yeah, Rev. Exactly. <laughs> Hashtag Blue Lodge Murder. Um, anyway, say what you want about the law. <laughs> I mean, I put him up against somebody like Kat, Sven. I mean, Kat's, Kat's a big dude, like 2, 220, something like that, and Muay Thai trained, like MMA and Muay Thai trained. Like, I put him up against Kat, for sure. Um, Caboose, it, it, it's not that they can't tell the difference. That's, that's, yeah, that's not the issue. It's, it's not that they can't tell the difference. Oh, and that is true what zippy just said there the psych profiles on on um like corrections officers Ooh, it's a nightmare man well cat take care of yourself and yes fuck them thanks for stopping by my man uh 
Um, I just, I know, I just really fucking want to hope there are people out there in the world that have a desire to kill dogs. Caboose, there's a lot of fucking people. There's a lot of fucking people out there that want to kill dogs. And a lot of them wear badges. Uh, Chew toy. Four-year degree. Sorts, it sorts most of the shit out right away. Four-year degree. Criminal justice degree. Four-year four year criminal justice degree required. Not like maybe one day you'll get it. Four-year criminal justice degree required for a foot in the door. That'll sort out 90% of these issues. Relegate. Yeah, most of them are, as Chris just said, no, uh, are thugs with badges. Yeah, just no more thugs with badges. Like, that's... It's it's pretty simple. It really is. I, I, I don't believe... I, most of these problems are not that are not that complicated. Honestly, if you wanted to solve your policing problem, two things. <clears throat> Watch this. I'm going to use capitalism to solve... Uh, to um, fucking cur curb this problem, right? We'll, we'll do this the capitalist route. We've got our solution, right? Like, people have been saying... Multiple people, community-oriented... People have been... We have our solutions. Here's the solution. You want the solution for this shit... All right. One. Insurance. You need liability insurance. I, as a consultant, had to carry it. My mother, as a nurse, had to carry it. Doctors, lawyers, they all carry liability insurance. All right. Liability insurance. Issue number one. All cops should have personal, not group, not union, personally covered liability insurance. The insurance companies would sort this shit out real fast. You get one ten million dollar settlement against you, watch your rates shoot through the roof. You have that happen again, no insurance company will touch you. They will not insure you. Don't have your liability insurance? You don't get to work. It's that simple. Two, college degree. You do these two things, most of your policing issues sort it sorts itself out. Even with the systemic back end. Even with all that, uh, even with all the fucking like white supremacy bullshit behind the scenes, you do those two things. Most of the people who are in those positions of bullshittery that we are we are talking about, the psychopaths, they fall by the wayside. They're gone. They're gone in a generation. Hey, skeptic. So there you go. Education and the marketplace can solve this. Straight up. Yeah. Um, eh, okay. Skeptic. Okay. Um, one really irritating thing earlier. Um, fucking one douchebag that just fucking thought he was special. Um, and then one weirdo fucking, I don't know if he's still in here, but one weirdo who's just obsessed with like gay dudes coming in each other's buttholes. Um, and ending their genetic lineage and shit. It's a weird obsession, but you know, yeah. Oh no, skeptic. Nothing, nothing on that order. No, just, just some dude who, who did, misunderstood the parasocial relationship and was demanding a bit more attention than he deserved. Um, and then behaved like a child as a result. He thought all gay men were tops. It was silly. Yeah, how would, I can't even wrap my head around that one. Um, Oh, Kiki. Um, yeah, by throwing us over. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we've been in just chatting for a while. <laughs> All tops equal circle. Yeah, Cassie, I was, was that's the first thing that popped in my head was, was this a circle? Like that feels like a circle. Um, I'm a bot. I'm not going to lie. Oh, skeptic. 100%, 100%, 100%. I've never done it. I've never topped. So I feel you. Uh, reminds me of straight twos who will poke their index fingers together at the tips and go, this isn't how sex works. Gay people are doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, there is docking. I mean, there is, you need an uncircumcised one uh, to do that. Uh, but I mean, there is docking. That's, that is something. 
at least kind of in the ballpark at least <clears throat> not a fan of Doc I prefer naval play <laughs> chair kicker um uh Damn, that's a thing. Yep. Krusty. If there's a way to get off, gay Jews have found it. Um, <clears throat> how sex works. However the fuck you like it, why is it anybody's fucking business so as long as there's mutual consent? Chew toy. You're asking the same question that gay dudes have been asking for um, ever. And lesbians and every, every, everybody. Just everybody. All of the cues. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Kai's too far away to give hugs, so you're the chosen one. Well, Zippy, you're the chosen one. Go, go, hugs, fan. Yep, it's it's your turn, Zippy. Told you, Sven. Sven, you're like, what, 20? You're like 18 or 20, something in there, right? You're youngin'. You're youngin' territory. Um, But if you do ever actually make it to Vegas, I will give you a hug if you so choose. I'm going to have to fucking put a piece of plywood behind, uh, between us to keep you in, uh, uh, you know, in check. But I'll give you a hug. <laughs> I'm going to have to hug you from behind just to make sure. Um... 20 year old a uh, 20 old man uh, 20 year old man um so all right uh you say this best to cut him out of your life i'm doing just that it's just hard because i see him at work every day she ignores me but she glances at me and so it's weird eh, it's gonna be weird for a while skeptic it's gonna be weird for a while but you know what you're doing the right thing man you're on the right path you're doing the right thing Sven, if plywood isn't strong enough, then you may have my attention. Um. Oh, Jesus. I don't have the Expanse books like handy, Karina. Um, yeah. That's not a thing I have just laying around. Um. I'm just trying to think how I would grab that really quickly. Um, yeah, if you like, that's it's that's not something I have like just laying around, Karina. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, fucking <laughs> uh, Curio's title stream title for tonight. Breaking local man arrested for unvirgining one grocer's olive oil. Yeah, yeah, Karina. Uh, I've uh, like that's the expanse for me is like I prefer. Forgive me. I prefer the TV show. Um. No, the expanse is it, look. It's it's a good book series. It's a good tv show it's solid um extra violated all of oil um it's 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 really good hard sci-fi it's really good hard sci-fi um but for me like it, there's there's just some like i mean some sometimes you just want to watch it sometimes you just want to watch it there's a lot of cool shit that happens in the expanse and you're like eh. Oh, you can paint the, the most vivid pictures in your mind's eye. Yeah, have you seen modern CGI techniques? I can't do that in my in, in my mind. So, like, I'd rather just watch it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sippy. I don't have chew toy. I don't have a visual imagination. I, I don't. I don't have one of those vi uh, visual imaginations. Um, so, for me, yeah.
<laughs> oh, poor Caboose. I used to be in that. I, Caboose, I used to be one of those. Honestly, I used to be. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Just don't. No, I'm not hugging you. One of my, one of my friends broke me. Like, he broke me. He's just the most kind and loving and wholesome dude ever. And he loves hugging his friends. And it's like, oh, how do you, how do you put it? It's, it's like, it's like kicking a puppy, right? It's like kicking a puppy. When this dude says, you know, when he comes up and wants to hug you and you tell him no, honestly, it's like kicking a fucking puppy or a kitten or something. It's like, dude, just get over yourself. Like, give him a hug. And eventually it sort of rubbed off. It was like, oh. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I was kind of being a weird dickhead for a lot of years. All right. You know, some people have other reasons. I'm just saying I was being a weird dickhead. I'm not saying everybody is automatically a weird dickhead for refusing people's hugs. Um, but yeah, one of, one of my friends broke me of that. Um, you see, that's caboose. That's one of those categories of like, I get that. I get that. Like for some autistic people, sensory overload and that sort of stuff. Like I understand it's a whole other category for me. It was just, I'm a, it was a misanthropic asshole for a lot of my life. And quite frankly, I don't like people. Don't touch me. Right. So, um, guys, some people can do that in their mind. Yeah. Whether I can't, um, Karina, get you DM. That's pretty crazy. I don't, I don't visually construct things in my mind's eye. Like that's not how I, I build things in my imagination. I build things in my imagination differently from that. Um, very much a narrative driven. Um, so I need, like, for me, it's not like, oh, the the. It, for me, it is build the thing out of language, right? So if I don't have a word for something, I'm kind of fucked. Um. So yeah, for me, it is very much a, a, a writer's exercise. And that's the thing is I'm, I'm a writer, Karina. Like I, I do write like that's the, so that's, that's how I approach those sorts of things. Um, I had a huge problem with physical affection as a kid, not phased by it now. Yeah, Elrond, it's kind of in that category too. I have a best friend like that. I'm with him to the end, defend him even when he's in the wrong like that. I was just a police suspect due to associating with him. <laughs> ride or die friends are necessary, skeptic, and I'm glad that you you can be a ride or die friend. That's that's a good thing. Um, skater dog, thank you for the follow. Um, <laughs> fucking a rev. Oh, uh, let's see. Kai just hasn't had his fan hug. Be good and squeeze like a lemon. <laughs> oh, Sven. I, I actually kind of, I know, I look, it, Sven knows this, so I can say this without offending Sven. Sven, I know some people in the community get annoyed by you, Sven. I, I am actually rather bemused by you, and I, I kind of do hope to meet you one day. I, I want to see how much of this is, is an act and how much of this actually is your personality. <laughs> Because if, if the good good majority of it is um, uh, actual personality characteristics, I will be fascinated by that. You you would you would amuse me. Um, interesting. So caboose, maybe it's the intimacy or the overwhelming nature of the hug. Like you're fine with a handshake, you're fine with a high five, you're fine with a hand of shoulder. So that's all sort of like ancillary touching. It's sort of periphery touching, but like the hug is sort of an encompassing thing. So, um, oh, Puka, thank you for the biddies. Um, you gotta head and take care of yourself. Um, uh, thanks for stopping by Puka. Uh, yes, yeah, skater. Yeah. Oh yeah. Feel free. I mean, I'm not promising that I'm not going to mock you relentlessly for your question, uh, depending on the nature of your question. We get a lot of transphobes, a lot of homophobes, a lot of, you know, those sorts of people. So we have to, mockery is good tactic for dealing with that. But no, feel free to ask. Um, really anything. Um, Sven is a fun reoccurring character. Um... Even when we don't talk for months, we still manage to keep in touch, to hang out. Even when he's deci deciding a name for his kid, I said Marianne. He just named her Mary. Even uh, when we don't talk for months, we still manage to remain the closest of friends. Dude, skeptic. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Um. Oh, Jesus, Fed. Uh, I think it's a control thing. You can't control the hug. Interesting, Caboose. Hmm. Fascinating. 
Um, I don't like hugging non-family members or people don't know in a relationship. I don't call a friend being offended because he thought it was because it was gay. <laughs> um, yeah, skeptic. Uh, my best friend from high school who I still, I consider a sister. She and I can go a fucking year without talking. Like, no big deal. We're still the best of friends. Yeah. Uh, many people are always, like, wondering which actor is going to be cast for the character in the novel you read. Radavandar, that's actually... Dude, that's, that's, that's actually really sort of well, beautifully put, Radavandar. You forgot the question already, Skater. All right, well, fair enough. If you, if you, if, if you recall it, then feel free. Um... Uh, how high are you, skater? <laughs> Jesus, Sven. That was an aggressive hug. <laughs> it's fucking the Sven controls the Sven hug. Try and break free. I'll body slam you to the ground, you peasant. But not you. The chosen one. And he says to Zippy. <laughs> um... Is there? There's a second of that fucking movie? There's a second of that movie. It was released in 2015. Holy shit. Oh, it grossed 13 million, but cost somewhere between 14 and 18 million. That's interesting that we don't know that number. Yeah, this thing bombed like hard. Huh. Yeah. It's probably just because it's really bad. Rev, like, bad enough to be good? Is it is it a contender for, for bad movie night? <clears throat> um. Oh, yeah, skeptic. Skeptic. Yeah. I've never had to sit through a police interrogation, but I know those people. Like, I... Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm schooled in their tactics. So. I can't be... Thanks, uh, thanks killing. Dude. I'm sorry, but I, I, I just... You know, anytime... Like... Fun fact, trivia about the movie Thanks Killing. In the turkey rape scene, the puppeteer can be seen. I'm sorry, in the what scene? The turkey rape scene. Oh, okay. So the the demon turkey rapes somebody. All right. Yeah, that was a hell of a thing. Um... Oh, Jesus Christ, Karina. I just saw, like, I saw, I saw Sven reply to you, Karina, and I was like, wait, what did Karina say? Is it cheating if I twiddle your bunghole to get out? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Skeptic. Um, oil check. Yep. Gotta check the oil. And apparently that's cheating, according to Sven. I get that, Caboose. I understand that. Yeah. The, um... It, it was self-aware. Which, again, postmodernism killed bad movies. Postmodernism killed bad movies. Thanks Killing was self-aware, which makes it not as enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, skeptic for sure. 
Yeah, drop them in fucking Discord. Said put put them in shared content so we can all see them. Yeah. It's cool. I learned this move from Joe Rogan. Oh, Rev. Um, mm, Rev. Maybe, maybe. I'd have to go back and watch virtu Virtuosity to be sure. Um, Skater Dog. All right. Um, I answer questions in strange order sometimes. Um, how do we move uh, social conservatives to the left? Because it seems to the right has convinced social conservatives stuff like universal health care and unions are somehow morally evil. Um, conversation. Here's the truth of the matter. You need to be able to engage with these people. Most people on the left can't engage with them. You can't. You have to meet them on some sort of ground. You have to have shared ground. Like, anarchists, we do really well with, like, Second Amendment stuff. We do really well with um, uh, with it's sort of, uh, the sort of individualistic aspect of, like, hey, fuck government, get it off our backs sort of thing, right? So we can meet them in some sort of shared area so they don't feel out of their element. So you have to create a space in which they feel comfortable in the first place. And then once they're in that space that they're feeling comfortable, you have to engage in the dialectical exercise. You have to use rhetorical device. You have to have a conversation with them. And you have to be able to guide the conversation in such subtle manners that you start making persuasive arguments without them realizing you're making persuasive, persuasive, uh, persuasive arguments. A lot of this is done via Socratic method and just you know questioning them and drawing out the answers and why is that and that sort of thing. And it's a one by one process. It's very difficult to do via mass media. It's very difficult to do via st traditional um, propaganda and uh, propagandization tech, uh, methods. Um, so it is. It's an uphill battle uh, for sure. What we have to do is is more work than what they have to do. Appearing uh, uh, appealing to fear and the lowest common denominator is super easy, and you can do it on a mass media level. Um, undoing that damage and convincing somebody of a philosophical or meta-ethical argument surrounding universal health care, that sort of thing, is a more individualized tactic. Because the fact of the matter is you could have a conversation with person A, and person A, you use, X, uh, you use argument X, but you move on to person B, and you use argument X, and it fails miserably. You have to use argument Y on person B. And person C is argument Z, that sort of thing. So it, a lot of the times the argument has to be customized as well. So you have to take that into account. So it's a very individualistic thing, which is what I do on the regular. Like, I know we're in just chatting right now, and that's probably where you came from. I don't know. Um, but normally we're over in the politics channel. But today we were way, way out in the in the weeds. Um, and so I moved us over to just chatting. Um, but that's what I do on a regular basis is I have the conversation. Um, and I do believe that's where it starts. It starts with conversing. So I hope I answered it in some way, shape, or form for you. Um, we need indie filmmakers willing to make a serious movie. This is bad rather than making a bad movie. Yeah, ooh, yeah. Uh, oh shit, Evil Bong. Yeah, I have Evil Bong versus Ginger, uh, Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong, which is just one of the worst fucking movies. Like, it's just terrible. Um, yeah, Evil, Evil Bong and Ginger Dead Man are in that category. Uh, serious question for Pink Flamingos on Bad Movie Night. It's not a bad movie. Um, Pink Flamingos is avant-garde. Um, avant-garde filmmaking. Um, it's not a bad movie. Um, I mean, we can watch it. BMN is you sort of... We're sort of getting to that point where we might be comfortable doing other stuff. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would say that Pink Flamingos is not, like, a bad movie. It's just... Um, we've already watched the Giver 1 um, Rev. Giver 2 I have in the collection, but it is... It, it's not. It's not. It, it's, it's, it's not a, like, good, bad movie. Um, yeah, but Guyver 1 most surely is, and we've watched that one. Um, Caboose, yeah. I, I mean, I hope, I hope we're helping in some way, shape, or form. Um, oh, yeah, Chris, The Last Dragon's on the list. 
I, I haven't gotten to it yet, but The Last Dragon is it's on the list. Are you shitting me? 70s, uh, 70s kung fu and black, uh, black exploitation film combined? Yeah, trust me. We'll we'll get to the last dragon for sure. Um, I mean, we already watched blatant porn. I think we could handle that. Anything? It's true. That is true. Blatant porn would be a great name for a porno. Blatant porn would be a good band name. I claim it. Um, Dark Crystal, uh, spitballing out. Um, no, Dark Crystal is a goddamn masterpiece. I'm sorry. I refuse, I refuse to acknowledge that as, like, anything but a, a genius masterpiece. Um, uh, James, we already did Ricky O. Yeah. We've already done Ricky O. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kung Pao Enter the Fist should be in there. Um... It's self-aware, too. Kung Pao Enter the Fist uh, suffers from the same postmodernism uh, critique problem. Um, it's, it's completely self-aware. It knows what it is. Um, I, would, um, I would argue... Uh, what's the other one? Um, what's the other uh, fucking... What's the one I'm thinking of? Um, Kung Fu Hustle. That's it. Rev. Kung Fu Hustle. I would say Kung Fu Hustle is better at doing what Kung Pao Enter the Fist tries to do. Um, maybe Caboose. It's, it's entirely possible. Um, I haven't tried watching it since I took, uh, took, uh, since I took up drugs as Rev. Um, Shaolin Soccer is probably even closer, uh, to being better at that. Um, I have right now, um, I forget what it's called. I have, um, Battlefield Baseball which is literally, a, it's a Japanese movie that is like a high school. None of the actors are even close to being of high school age. It's a high school baseball team that has to battle like zombie team and I don't know, like sold World War II soldier team and shit. Like it's like a whole bunch of fucking themed teams. Um, and so it, it's just terrible. Um, it's, it's trash. Um, so in that sort of same category. Um. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. Are we talking um Kung Fu Hustle? Cuz yeah, like the the fucking subs um are entirely different than the dubs. Yeah. Yeah, the subs are entirely different from the dubs. Uh it's, it is. It's very much like every line is different. It's ridiculous. Um Oh, Krusty, I, I mean, I don't usually have trouble. I, hey, think of it a follow, Graham. Uh, I don't usually have trouble sourcing. Um, I had one recently. I was like, I don't know, fucking Steel, Steel Frontier? Steel Frontier. Um, that was a pain in the ass. But beyond that, yeah. Um, anything else I wanted to talk about before I fucking close this list no no i'm good oh um just 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 a shout out to uh fucking the philippines and what was her what was her name uh Hidilin diaz um first gold ever for the philippines rock the fuck on for them i mean the olympics are a corrupt nightmare that ends up killing like untold amounts of migrant workers in the construction of their um stadiums and various facilities wherever they may go but, you know, that aside, congratulations to the Philippines for getting their first gold medal ever. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, well, I mean, let me, I mean, I can give it a look. Night loaded. Oof, no seeds on that. No source there. It's on Prime Video. <laughs> Loaded. It's on Prime Video. Um, it's on YouTube. 
Night Loaded, the entire movie is on YouTube. Uh, bad Movie Night, Night Loaded is almost guaranteed to be in there somewhere, so I don't have to look, hard, look far. Um, Night Loader. Check your DMs, Night Loader. Yeah, the the entire the entire movie is on YouTube. Um, <laughs> me, Kaiser, me eat protein. Good on you, Kaiser. Uh, what's the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? I've never had a garbanzo bean all over my face. Yeah. Um, I'll be rooting for Somalia in the Olympics from now on. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, letter, no worries. Um, wait, God, anarchist. Thank you. You're pressed easy. Uh, bring back free territory in Eastern Ukraine. Good luck. He sorry, random thought. Uh, mock, mock, no, would have kicked your ass, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, Kez hit a thousand followers today. Um, that was that was the thing that happened for Kez today. Uh, I stopped by Kez's stream earlier. Just to just to say hi before I started mine. Um, okay, no, I need to close that. Did they go away? Oh, that that reminds. Oh my God, Warthog's account is gone. Which 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 one? <laughs> Warthog's account is dead. Yeah. Account suspended. Um, notice. I, 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 I refresh their fucking log. They're gone. Yeah. Which one of you fuckers reported him? <laughs> Was it one of our people? Come on. Own up. Um. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Oh, uh, NCC's got way too many people. I can't be doing that. That's bad praxis. Um, oh, I know. I I know. Oh, I know. Ah, hey, you're welcome, Knight. Oh, you're still typing. I'll go back over to that page. Um, perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, um, uh, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> he refreshed his, his chat log and account suspended. Like, God damn. Oh, well, not surprised. Not too terribly surprised. Let's do this. Y'all. Um, Rabbit is live, and Rabbit only has eight people watching. So we need to do a Praxis, and we need to go over to Rabbit. Um, you know what? I'm going to change my fucking category before I raid out, though, just to... There, so I don't have to reset that shit later. Um, so we're going to raid over to Rabbit. Um, yeah, that's, that's not something I've ever gotten to do, um, for Rabbit. So I want to see more of you fuckers actually like good night, Sven. Um, they're doing uh Stardew Valley date night. Well, you know, I, I've, I raid Momo. Momo raids me, um, but I've never gotten the opportunity to raid Rabbit. So, um, Adam, no worries. Uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna raid over to, I, Viva, he's never on when I'm on. Rabbit, Rabbit streams rando at best. Um, and so, yeah, we've never had the opportunity to raid Rabbit. So, the opportunity has finally presented itself. So, we're gonna do it. Um, either way. Um, yeah, like, if you're not falling, if you don't know who Rabbit is, then fucking A. Like, I don't know how, how, but either way, 
Um, I'll be on tomorrow at 11.30 p.m. Pacific time.